you know, as much as I was able to help people and I made some great memories and, and of course leveled up in certain aspects, it wasn't leveling me up in the perhaps the pursuit that I was after. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I was like, I've got to make a decision for me now. Welcome everyone to another Words of Wisdom podcast. Now, today I'm joined by the infamous Alp. Hey. Um, funnily enough, it must be weird for Alp because yeah. the last time we were here, it was on Alp's podcast. Yes. Um, and that's how I even came across the whole studio. So I'm only here because of Alp. Um, <laughs> and I've always, I think I've said that on like nearly every podcast anyway. Yeah. I always say like, so some people say to me, oh, I watched you on Alp's podcast who came oh, on. Sick. Uh, like Lewis, he came on yeah, yeah. and he said, oh, that's how I found you. And I said, well, that was right over there. So, <laughs> yeah, literally, isn't it? Yeah, that's mad, bro. But um, welcome, bro. Thanks, um, bro. Happy to be here, man. Appreciate it. Looking um, forward to uh, just having a chat, man. Yeah, nice. I, guess, I guess you get to talk more this time. Yeah, than, than yeah most it's, times. Be, it's definitely different being this side. Already, I'm just like, rah, okay. But um, no, I'm looking forward to it, mate. It'll be a good conversation. Hopefully, value as always. Oh, of course. Uh, it's just like, for me, the reason I love podcasts so much, and that's why I've literally just decided um, that's all I'm doing. I just had some vlogs that came out from the, the recent meetup, but after they that, sick. They, were sick. they were just funny. And they were yeah, just yeah. fun. But, um, but otherwise, after that, that's it now. It's just podcasts because I just I, it's actually something I wanted to do before trading. Podcasting's great, yeah. mate. If I could, again, not being in London is annoying, kind of annoying for me, but mm. if I could find enough people to be on it, I'd do podcasting more. I get asked all the time, but mm. I'm like, you don't realize doing them in person is a lot harder because you've got to get the people here. You've got to get the studio. Mm. I started doing them on Zoom, but I just didn't feel like you get the same. You don't, you don't get the and, same vibe, uh, man. Same like in, in terms of the viewers, they won't get the same vibe either. No. And also it's just the the quality is nowhere near the same it's, i did one and I, you know someone was a, um not in the uk and the, the internet you could just tell but mm. like they kept freezing and i was like i think you have to stop and then you have to stop and have to try and edit i remember your out. first one with mash and it was yeah, like the cloudy, the cloudy background the cloudy back i put us in a kitchen or something like he was in his car doing that no way. <laughs> like, i'm sorry i'm in my car i was like it's cool man but i want to get like i was talking to mash the other day it'd be cool to get us all like on a on a thing um mm. and just chat he mentioned Definitely. it so that'd be cool Definitely, man. Like, we've got some uh, some nice ideas planned and, and we'll get some things together for sure. It's hard though, you know, like it's hard just getting mashed down for one, let, for alone, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let alone getting, getting everyone involved. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. It's, people are always sending me like, get this person on. And I'm like, it's not as easy as get that person on. You've got to get them to London. I wish it was. It would be nice. Mm. Um, maybe one day we'll be big enough, bro, where we can just send someone a car and it will pick them up and then yeah. they can just come yeah, yeah. down in it. Because <laughs> eventually, a lot of the good people are in the States and Canada, yeah. well, all, yeah, all over, a lot of to people be honest, let's be honest. Right yeah. Cool, we, we could do like a little road trip, mate. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, go to the States for it podcasting. It gets wild. Road, tri <laughs> road trips get wild, man, honestly. Be mad, bro. But I know a lot of people, obviously, they will know your journey already, more than yeah, likely, but probably. we'll just do a quick recap. Yeah, 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 cool. Um, of, you know, how long you've been trading and yeah, yeah, the fine. stuff that you get up to. Um, so I've been trading coming up six years now. Uh, four, four, first four years were like like the usual, do you know mm. what I mean? I, I got approached by Donnie on Instagram. He had a Rolex. He had a, I think he had an R8 at the time. He had the and stuff. I, he had the source, bro. And I was like, I remember saying to my missus, I was like, babe, this guy's gonna make me rich. And she was like, so he's messaged you to tell you he can make you rich and he only needs 300 pound. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and it's a typical thing, you know, he's got obviously a broker affiliation, sending signals, mm. all that stuff. So but I got into it like that. Why is it the partners always know? Why oh, is it bro. why is it that they always know? The amount of things she gets right, and I'm like, oh, I guess she was right on that one as well then. She should do signals. She should do it, bro. <laughs> like, honestly, I was like, you should start your own thing, innit? You know what to look for. Um so yeah, he approached me, done that. And then funny enough, I had a friend from school who reached out and was like, I trade as well. And I was like, oh cool. So we started doing a few bits together. Um, trying to actually learn it because I was fed up of following signals. I'd mm. done everything. I remember messaging some guy in Dubai. He sent like, you know, the typical TP123, three, three trades. Yeah. And I was in mega drawdown, bro, on a Friday. And I was like, big man, uh, are these trades going to work out? Like, because I thought back then he could like tell me it was going to work. And he was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, man. It was cool. And he was like in a club with bottles and that. And I was like, oh, you obviously, and I blew the whole account up. And I was like, let's go again. And I just kept going signal to signal. Then I started to try and learn. Learning with a friend. Couldn't really grasp it the way he was teaching. It was like, it, it just didn't make enough sense. Um, so now I kind of like put it on a bit of pause and just continued my life doing the usual stuff. But I always knew there was something there. Yeah. And then um, I had another guy I started following who again, 
Lamborghini, the penthouse, the, the source. But his stuff was quite good at the beginning. I was making money and I was like, oh, I've cracked it. Like, we're, we're good. That's it, yeah. And then, again, we, we didn't crack it and it didn't work out. And it's funny, actually, recently he messaged me on one of my Instagram posts saying, bro, it's nice to see you're killing it. And, and I was like, right, you, I used to fucking pay you for signals, man. Like, what? <laughs> um, it's a bit mad. but um, It goes full circle, doesn't it? It does. It just goes around. And now he's doing education in a, in a different way, the whole, you know, SMC and all that shit. And, um... Yeah, kind of from there, then I was like, right, I need to take this serious. I need to actually learn how do you trade? Can you trade? And I always had the understanding. There's people that trade. I know there's people that made money trading, mm. but they were quite quiet about it. Back then, finding education was tough because, well, there wasn't a lot. And um, I was downloading different courses. I remember paying like a thousand pound for this course. It was like FIBS, EMA. And when the FIB and the EMA crossed, we were getting in. And I paid a <laughs> grand for it. And I was like... This is the shit. And again, it didn't work. And yeah. I was just, you know, I did that for a long time. Basically, four years was like that. And then, like I said, I had a little break. I was like, I've spent way too much money. I'm in deep here. Yeah. Um, I wasn't in a financial position to really be able to do it. Sometimes I was, you know, taking money that was like, Rob, I need to pay bills. And I'm like, yeah, but this 300 quid, this one will work. And, and I'm always attached to it. And it, it was chaos, mate. I remember working on my jobs. I was always putting my phone out. People I work with were like, bro, Stop wasting your time. Like, it's a load of shit. I was like, no, nah, there's something here. Like, I knew there was something. I just needed to find the way, the mm. path, right? And that's why I say to so many people, like, there is no special secret source you'll land on day one. Unless you're very lucky nowadays, you're going to have to go through the shit. Mm -hmm. And it's it's where it kind of, it kind of tests you. Have you actually got what it takes to become a trader? Are you going to go through all that and come out the other side? Not many people do, and I can see why. Mm. Uh, and then I, I sort of came across a community where for the first time, I started to understand and I got like a, oh shit, this is working. Like this actually, I'm making some profit. Mm. And I was seeing other people sort of making profit. And it was around the time when FTMO had kind of surfaced. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, I no longer need that 10, 20 Loads grand account. Money, yeah. I can kind of just spend 400 quid and I can get 100K. Like I was like, oh my God, like this, game is, this is it. Yeah. And I think now that is truly the game changer for everyone in this industry. Like if if you're not someone who like myself and many people, when you've got family, you don't have 20, 30 grand in the bank. You can just go, let's trade it and not be attached to it. You might have it, but you know, maybe you and the wife are saving up for a, a house or yeah. it's an emergency fund. The last thing you want to do is put that in a trade account and, and just blow it. So having a prop fund account, I was like, well, this is it. And I was still working my job. I was doing a little bit of like drop shipping and, and Amazon stuff. And I was just trying to make extra money. I've always had that like hustle approach. Let's try and make money selling sweets and shit in the school playground. You know what I mean? Like I was the guy <laughs> with the bag like, and I had like yeah. galaxy chocolate bars. I was like one pound, yeah. And people can't treat lunch. So kind of doing that, I was like, I've always had that mindset. And I've always wanted more than just the average, you know, go to a job and, and that's Nine that. Five, yeah. It's not, not, like I said, there's nothing against that. But I feel like having just that um, isn't ideal. Like, Having a nine to five is fine, but you need to have another source of income mm. because no I'm against it personally. In. Oh, yeah. in the sense that not that I, you know, if someone wants that, that's fine. But I'm against it in the way that you know, m majority of people I know and I've come across in life, they want more. Yeah, they want more. Yeah, right. They do want more. They want the they want to be able to do the lavish things, not for the purpose of having them or, or posting about it, but because they want it. Yeah, they want to enjoy they it. Experience it. And. Uh, the nine to five will never give you that no, it won't. ever. It won't. Right? That's why it's designed to be the nine to five. That's why it's called the rat race, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why in, the, in an essence, I'm against yeah, yeah. nine to five. And I don't agree with nine to five because I believe that everyone should have that yeah, freedom. I agree. I believe, of course, that, you know, if you're happy with that, I don't yeah. think there are many yeah. people who are happy with it, truly. No. But if you are happy with that, fair play to you, you do your thing. But, you know, as Gary Vee says, if you're complaining, if you're not happy, yeah. You definitely should not be doing it. And you yeah, should cool. be working towards something you're passionate about, you enjoy. And that's why, you know, trading uh, for us, you know, and, and I think for a lot of people it's possible. But the thing is, as you've talked about there across your journey, and that's why, you know, I do it, instead of being loud about profits or lifestyle, I'm loud about mindset. Yeah, same Because that's here, what it is. Same here. And that's why, as you said, like, you know how people are, you know, people can be lucky and find themselves mm -hmm. joining something quick, uh, first, sorry, rather than the years that we've put in. Yeah. People can do it, you know, they yeah, can sure. do it sooner people do it, if they sure. focus on that mindset, Yeah, you know, because that's all it is. Like, yeah. in terms of knowledge, you could, like that Fibonacci EMA, for example, if you have the right mindset, it might work. It work. It, that's right? the thing, bro. People do that and make money. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. And that, that was another thing for me that only now 
have I realized again, because I've got control of the mind more, that any strategy, any edge works. If you want, I believe in it, understand it, execute consistency, but you've got control of that. Mm. Like, and that was the thing that back then, no one spoke about. There was no mindset this, trading's hard. All that was shown, bottles in the club, Lambos, Rolexes, lavish lives, and you just assumed you had to push a button. Mm. So to anyone, it's like the dream, right? But the reality is when you look at the actual stats, why isn't everyone then the millionaire billionaire? Mm -hmm. And that was where my head was like, oh, maybe this is more of a business, more of a profession. And I started like putting it down in terms of, right, if you were to start a business, let's say you were starting a clothing brand, for example, mm. you've got to go for the manufacturing of finding the manufacturer. You've got to get designs. You've got to get the product pack. You've got to test it. You've got to sample it. You've got to find all the materials. That could take you a year. Then you could launch and make nothing for the first year, maybe break even at maybe most. Most years, businesses two, yeah. don't even make a profit first year. So then when I started to take that mindset to trade in, I was like, rah, if I look at it the same as a business and what it can bring in, in years to come, maybe I'll, I'll stop looking for that, I need money now, I need to be paid now, and go, let's just see what happens, let's see what the course happens, and focus on the areas that clearly there's, a, there's an issue, which was my mind. I was, I was greedy, had FOMO, I needed money because my life, I didn't have money, mm -hmm. I wanted to change Boy. the girl's life, and you can't trade in that mindset. Like, I don't care what anyone says, some people are like pressure makes diamonds, yeah, cool. But in trading, pressure fucks you up. Like it the, does you in, man. The thing is, the pressure does make diamonds, but it's how you, you know, it's how you uh, actually view that. Mm. You know, the pressure to to push yourself with no money or anything like that, it's not going to work because you will gamble. Because in the in the the game that we're in, the psychology will creep in, the fear or the greed. One of those two will creep in. Yeah. If you don't have the money, you don't have yeah. the backing. The pressure can work if you use that pressure to force you to do the right things. You know. Yeah. Do the sacrifice to build the a cash buffer. Do the sacrifice to reduce the debt. Do the sacrifice to uh, build the systems. Take build the, the habits, time to do that. Right? Yeah. yeah, and sacrifice in the short term. And that's another thing, though, that people don't realize is, as the breadwinner in particular, you know, as the someone who's maybe the 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 one who's bringing in majority of the income, right? Or regardless, if even if it is split, at the end of the day, you're still looking after your kids, you know, and yeah. you're still, uh, you know, controlling that household with the partner. And the fact is, as a group, as a unit, you have to be willing to sacrifice sometimes, live yeah, below the means to do it. And that's the bit that can be hard. Mm -hmm. But if everyone can believe in that vision and see that vision and know it's possible, that's the bit that's difficult, obviously, yeah. trying to get others on board. Yeah, and it's not about convincing them, it's about making sure that, at the end of the day, some people, and this is why it doesn't work for the majority, is that they're lazy. Yeah, of course. They talk a big game. Yeah. They're ambitious, lazy people. I saw uh, Patrick Beck talk about this, where he goes, ambitious, lazy people are the worst. Right? They're the ones who hold the biggest regrets. And the reason why people won't believe in them uh, and they won't believe in your vision is because you probably said it about dropshipping. You probably said it about, you know, this, you know, like you said, T-shirt business. You probably said it about this investment. Yeah. But you never actually, even those things probably could have worked, but you yeah, never yeah, put yeah, the work in. No, Same with trading. So like, the fact is people will believe in you and I've seen this, like people believed in me because I always had the work ethic, yeah, yeah. right, to back it up. I always proved what I was saying mm. because I was willing to sacrifice and go put in the work. Mm. Well, a lot of people will say it, the big game, but then they'll be sat on COD straight yeah, after, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, there's too many people like that in this world. And that was where I had to buckle up and was like, right, if you want to do this thing, mm -hmm. there's no more now following signals, finding the next best Instagram guru is going to help you. Yeah. You've got to fucking work, mate. Mm. And then when you take that mindset of do the work and you and you actually put it in and you realize like this ain't a quick game and I've been saying it for so long now. And and the funny thing is, you know, it's, it's classic trade industry. The minute you pivot into more of the mindset, self-development, self-growth approach, no one gives a shit. They want the technical, give me the source to make money. Little do they know, just like myself, and I'll be accountable for that, Three, two years ago even, I didn't have a Scooby-Doo that mindset was even a thing. I was like, whatever, mate. Like, do you know what I mean? It was motivation, just, it was motivation whatever. Like, boring, you know, we, you've got to just get up and do it. And that's actually wrong. The more I've learned about my mind, the triggers, the emotions, the way I feel, the journal, everything I've implemented got me to where I am. There was no significant point where I was like, yeah, it was that mental. It, it wasn't. It was doing the work. Any mentor I've ever had... I've never just took from that pain that was from all the signals and the bad courses before. Mm. I never now took what a mentor said as gospel. I had to go. I got to believe in that myself. Yeah. Because exactly. just because whoever, I always use the example, Forex Smasher 69, yeah? He's big in the game. He's making loads of dough. Just because he makes loads of dough and just because he tells you what he does works doesn't mean you can execute that with consistency and with belief because you've got no clue. So go and get the belief, build the data, build the system to go, 
oh, rah, this, this does work because I believe in it. But I tweaked a couple things to suit me. And that's Definitely. why I say to everyone, like, these dons out there selling trade plans and doing what they're doing, all cool. But at the end of the day, that trade plan isn't the secret. It's not what's going to get you that success. What's going to get you that success is doing the work to make your own plan. Because you could have the most profitable traders plan in the world. If you don't understand it or believe in it, how the hell can you execute it with confidence if you take that loss mm. and you're like, well, that's why it I doesn't lost. work. You know, you can get someone who is, you know, mega funded or just mega, you know, successful at trading and has a, you know, seven figure account themselves and they're smashing trader, as you say. And uh, even if they have a cause, there's a reason why, you know, because essentially, really, if they're giving their exact plan and everyone just copies that plan, they should also be getting the exact yeah, same exactly. results. So in terms of success rate of students, it should be 100%. Yeah, exactly. But the reason it doesn't work is for that exact reason is that it has to be individual. And the way I describe it and the analogy I like to use for uh, teaching and courses, because I've used this myself, is any course you do, any mentor you have, any community you're part of, it's like a book. The book, you know, you, when you read a book, let's say the book's got 300 pages, it's not 300 pages of value. No. I've never read a book and gone, oh, wow. Every page. Every page was yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, every word was incredible. Yeah. You know, I found that trading in the zone. To me, chapter seven, that's it. Yeah. You know, thinking probabilities, that's it. The rest of it to me I don't, is useless to me. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That particular, there are little elements, I'm sure, like yeah, liners or whatever, but that chapter in that book is the key that I needed. Uh, think and grow rich. Uh, mastermind. Uh, mastermind. Uh, maybe some a couple of other things, but that mastermind was a big one key that I took from that one. Um, outweighing the devil, the term, the concept of drifting. Bang, one key taken from that one. Alchemist, um, in terms of a beginner's look, one key taken from that one. That's essentially the same with the courses and, yeah, and the mentors and communities. And I've seen it with so many people, like people who have come to me and been like, I've been in these different communities, and I always say to them, look, when you come here, you're not this. You better have a fresh slate in terms yeah, of. Yeah. You're not. You better not be joining thinking if I join the Vipers because I've heard their name, I'm gonna, that's it now. No, it's like you need to understand that you're gonna come in here and you may learn something, you know? Mm. From us, I always say to people, community might be different to what you've experienced before. And one particular mentor who's in, within the group might be the person you connect with. Mm. One aspect I say in terms of mindset might connect with you. That's all it is, you know? Mm. I've really doubled down in terms of process, you know? Yeah. Not as in, here's my process. I give my process yeah, yeah, as well, because that's what you have to do as a mentor, be like, this is how I trade, in case mm -hmm. that's how it resonates yeah, yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But I've gone doubled and tripled down into mindset massively, but also just saying like, look, here's all the tools, literally in terms of every tool you could possibly need to be successful, here it is. Mm -hmm. And this is all you have to do to put it together. And here I'm gonna give you examples of putting it together in case you're confused, but really you need to put it together for you. Mm -hmm. Only you know your routine. Only you know the confluences that you see. Like I don't use an RSI, but you might sit there and be like, RSI has been great for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't let anyone tell you. Like even though I'm a profitable trader, and if I turn around and say RSI is bullshit, I'm not saying it trying to say to you stop using it. That's just for me. That's yeah, my perception. Yeah. But if you've used it and it made you money, who am I who doesn't use it and never used it yeah, to yeah. tell you that it doesn't work? Yeah. It's like when people ask me about other pairs. Like they'll say like, what do you think to gold? And I'm like, look. I don't trade gold, so why do you want my opinion on it? Yeah. I'll go look at it, yeah. right? But you know there's another guy in our group who does trade gold consistently. He's right there. Ask him. Ask him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I will happily go look at the pair and look at the chart and give you my perspective. But in terms of uh, expert advice, that's why I have this guy here. Yeah. Because he trades it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, like, you're completely right in terms of thinking that this is the answer. And as soon as you had that thought, like this one must be the answer, because it happens so much. There's always yeah, a new source. There's always a new, um, you know, uh, really, uh, what's the word for it? Like uh, really sought after or really marketed or really hyped uh, aspect every few months. There's always yeah, a new oh, one. There's always a new one. It's boring. <laughs> you know, and it's just the same cycle, but it happens in everyday life, like the phones. Yeah, of course right? it does. It's just, there's always it's a new just, phone. There's always yeah. a little something. It's, not, it's relatively the same, but there's always just one little tweak that is really marketable at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it switches to something else. So I guarantee you probably, I don't know, maybe in a year or two, we'll be back to fibs again. <laughs> and the oh, fibs will be no, like, we'll be back bro. in. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but, Maybe, but, man, maybe. But no, I agree, mate. I think that's, they're like turning points where everyone has their own aha moment. And that was one big one for me was like, right, you got to actually figure this shit out yourself. Like you can pay for all the courses in the world. And it's that thing again, like it relates into the YouTube stuff I do. So as a human, naturally, what we're quite bad at doing is we're, we're bad at associating the time given to something. So we expect a return because we're like, oh, 
an analogy I'll use. I spent 10 hours making a YouTube video. It doesn't get the views I expected. I spent 10 hours doing that. No one gives a fuck. Mm -hmm. Like the YouTube don't care. The audience don't care. That's your problem. Find a way to work quicker. Do you know what I mean? So when I look at it in trading, it's like, oh, I spent my whole weekend back testing and the market took me out of a trade. The market don't give a shit, mate. Mm -hmm. Like figure out why. Was it part of the probabilities? Could you have done anything different? But don't put your time to, I need to be paid now. Put it as I'm learning a skill that in the future is going to pay off in dividends in terms of I could spend a couple of hours a day on a chart and make thousands and thousands of pounds. I was literally just saying that. I was saying I mean? like, look, in terms of trading, why why trading over every other you know conventional business that you hear about, even these online businesses? Why? Because yes, it's a skill set that isn't the easiest to learn. And uh, the reason I love it is because to be successful at it, it forces you yeah. to be the best version of yourself. It forces you to enter that journey of self-mastery, right? And other uh, avenues don't do that. Right, trading and investing is the only one that really forces you to have that self mastery in order to be successful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the reason I love it is because once you've done that, two hours a day, you can make the average yearly salary. Right. Exactly. Where else could you say that? Where yeah. else could you say that? Two hours a day and no manual labor. Yeah, you just push. Sat the the, yeah, you are <laughs> essentially pushing buttons. Now people use that to market, but it's the truth. Yeah, it's real. It's real. Right. And um, as you say, like you can't equate the time. You can't because the way I see it is like the three years that I spent, you know, losing 50,000, right, was paid back in literally the space of a month, yeah. you know, but in that three years, would I have been able to see that one day I'll do it in a month? I yeah. had to see it. Yeah. That's the thing. It's easy for us to say like, oh, no, I never saw it. But the truth is I had to see it because otherwise, how was I going to get through that? How was I going to see minus 50K? Yeah, <laughs> it's not you easy know what I mean? to swallow, is it? Exactly. And, and to be broke and, and yeah, to yeah, be yeah. in debt. You know, how would I be able to see that? You know, how would I be able to get through that? Sorry, if I did not see that one day I would yeah. achieve this, but I had to make the changes, you know, yeah. as you know, as we spoke on your podcast was uh, I had to have that uh, ultimatum. Mm. And I think so many traders out there have to give them that ultimatum because I think a lot of traders are just lazy bastards. They are. Right. They're just in here uh, thinking still with that same mindset that all I need to do is find the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail really exists. It does exist. Yeah. But it's in here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's in here. Right, it's what you're willing to do. How much heart do you have? You know, if I quit, if I use the analogy of boxing, I've had so many people over the years where I've met them, and and I'm not a great boxer. I just enjoy it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get great now, yeah. but but um, I, I'm just someone who enjoys it. I love it. Right, I love the art of it. Other people do too, but the difference is I won't go to someone and be like, yo, if we spar, I'm gonna batter you know, I'm nah, gonna get yeah, you, right? Yeah, yeah. But I've had people go to me like, you know, and they they do mean it playfully, and I don't mind it. Um, but I, I love it because then when they say that to me, I'm like, yes, you know, when we get in there, it's gonna be a great spa, it's gonna be a great session. I'm gonna get hit, but I'm gonna have to learn, blah blah blah. When it comes down to it, they like the idea of boxing. Yeah, yeah. But they they don't they don't do boxing. They don't no. know how to do it. They don't know what's required because when they get in the ring, and the minutes, you know, let's say it's a three minute round, it's only a three minute round, first round as well, and they can't finish the three minutes. Yeah. And it doesn't mean like even if they're tired, right? The whole thing of boxing, same with trading, is that you have to have the heart to go on. Yeah, of course you do. Right. And people don't have that heart, right? And they don't have that mindset. They don't have that longevity. They're thinking, get rich quick. They're thinking, hey, look, this is a way I can make money without doing work. Mm. So really, they're bringing that lazy mindset. A lot of them, they just don't want to do nine to five. I've spoke to a guy where I said to him, why do you want to be a trader? Oh, I tried to get a job once. I didn't like it. Right. I'm, I, I'm not made for jobs. Okay, bro. And I, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, already straight away, I was like, you're not going to do well in trading because you don't even have a work ethic to you. Yeah. You know, you need to actually be able to be not only work a job and do all the hours and also uh, be proficient and good at the job, you know, not just a job, but even at school, for example, you know, you might not work hard, but you're still proficient. You still, you got intellect. You still can achieve something if you want to. Yeah. Maybe it's just in one subject you enjoyed. You fucking excelled at that one subject. Yeah, yeah. You need to have that mindset. If you just have a lazy fucking mindset, like loads of people in school had where yeah. they just sit there and do fuck all. Loads of people in college, loads of people at uni, loads of people in jobs where they're just turning up, making money, going out on the weekend. And they have they don't like that life in terms of nah, like, nah. they're not able to go, you're not able to get the private jet. They're not able to get the first class. They're not even able to go to Novikov where we're going after yeah, tonight, yeah, for yeah. example, right? Those things don't matter. But the fact is they want to. But yeah. they can't yeah, 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 because they don't have the work ethic or the drive to even try to make a little bit extra money in their life. Yeah. And yet they use trading. I think trading is used massively as well as crypto, as well as NFTs. Um, it's used hugely by these lazy people where they think, I can just go in there, as you said, push some buttons and I'll make some I'll money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
It's um, it's bad, man. Like, oh, it's, even for me, I was saying the other day. Um, I actually, when I meet someone potentially new, or you know, see, even if it's family or something, if they ask what I do, I don't like saying I'm a trader mm -hmm. because the the energy that comes with you saying I'm a trader mm -hmm. is, ha, yeah, all right, mate. Like instantly, people just think, yeah, whatever. Or they go, oh, you're loaded then. I'm like, what? What? Why would I be loaded? They're like, oh, you're, you're killing it. Yeah, I've seen them traders. Yeah, Lamborghini, and, and I'm like. Well, hang on a minute. Like, why do you have that perception of that's only what a trader is? Mm -hmm. And it's funny you say about the human thing because I think in general, humans in general are just lazy. Like now we're at a world where you'll see millionaires at the age of 20 popping up with 20 million going, oh, I've, I've worked my heart. And people are like, what? Why the fuck's he 20? I want that. But they don't see the, the guy's been grafting since school. You know, talking about jobs. Bro, some of the jobs I did just to keep food on the table, awful. You know, some, I got to a point where I was like, I was doing a bit of freelancing in like the fashion industry and stuff, but it wasn't always guaranteed work. So sometimes just to make do, I had to go and drive airport parking cars <laughs> to park cars mm -hmm. just to try and fit it in around that, that one day they might be like, oh, there's a job for you in London. It pays well. And I could go, oh, can I just change my shift? Mm -hmm. I was doing that. I used to hate, I used to hide at the airport in case someone saw me. I used to have this thought of like, no, I can't be doing this. Like I've had all right jobs, but I did it because I was like, I have to do it, but I didn't ever do it badly or sit there going, this is shit, I don't want to be here. I was like, I don't want to be here, so what the fuck are you going to do about it? Not, exactly, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be here, oh, life's so hard for me, oh my <clears> God, <throat> one day someone's just going to come up to me and give me a million pounds. It was like, go and do something about it then. That's it. And that was where I was like, right, okay, what can I do online at the moment? I looked into the drop shipping and then I got a better job and I was like this, I worked nights, did some drop shipping, did some of the fashion. Now I'm like, oh, I've got a bit more money coming in. I'll look at getting back into trading. And then from that, I'm like, I'm using those motivations to trade in. And it's a funny thing because Something that I thought would be really important to talk about today is like motivation. We're on that topic to a degree. I personally don't think motivation is enough anymore for people to get up and do the thing. And the one thing that I really kind of identified to, and it's funny, James Smith speaks about this in his recent book, um, is actually identifying why do you want the thing that you say you want? Mm. So... For example, everyone says, oh, you know, we'll all wake up in the morning, let's say with the gym even. How many times do you want to go to the gym? There are days where you're like, oh, today, I just don't want to do it. But they're the best workouts usually. You leave going, I feel great. And you never leave a gym going, that was shit. You're always like a pumped, you're feeling good. But motivation didn't do that. You've got a reason why you want to do it. Yeah. So it's kind of like digging into, James Smith uses the equation of like pain points and going, right. And I kind of did this subconsciously about realizing I didn't call them pain points, I guess. I just called them like, for me, it was like a drive. But it was like, okay, so why do you want to be able to work from home? What is the reason for that? And I'm like, well, I want to be there for the kids. I want to be able to be my own boss. If they have a school play, I want to attend it. If they have a day off, I want to be there. I want to be a part of them growing up. Mm. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Why do you want to lose weight? Oh, I want to lose weight because I, I want to set an example for the kids. I want to be healthy. I want to be around for them when they get older. I don't want to be like, oh, I didn't look after myself. I'm not here for when you get married or I have kids. Feel good. I want to feel healthy in myself. You know, and that can relate to other people. James uses the example of sometimes people will come to him for online PT and he'll say, right, why do you want to lose weight? Like, I just want to lose weight. He's like, right, okay, but why do you want to lose weight? And then they go, oh, well, my partner won't sleep with me because I look, I look a certain way. And they're like, he's like, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So now when you wake up on that day and you're like, I don't want to do it, think of that. And that was what I started doing. I started waking up some days. I don't want to do the back testing. I don't want to look at the market or learn. Right, but you want to be there for your kids. Yeah. You want to be able to support them and give them better things. Yeah. So get the fuck up and do it. And That's that for it, yeah. me is a lot more than just waking up sometimes and going, you know, you get people preach, motivate yourself, motivate. Yeah, but motivation only gets you so far. You do need certain points. And I believe anyone listening here, if you dig into why, truly, why are you doing this? You'll find something that will go, oh shit, that's why I want to do this. And then you can use that as the days when you can't be asked to watch that seminar or you can't be asked to join that Zoom. You'll go, I need to do this for this reason. And it just helps you push you that little bit further on the days you don't want to do it. That's it. And uh, no, I completely agree. And it's so true because so many people do rely on trying just motivation and motivation only gets you so far as well. I think there's a saying something like motivation gets you there, but then discipline or consistency will yeah. take you to where you want to actually be. Um, but you know, on top of that as well, I think there's a lot of people well, in the society as a whole right now, obviously a lot of people relying on motivation and you're trying to use that. But society as a whole right now, and I think with the position we're currently in, in terms of the, the economies and the way the world is currently, <laughs> a lot of the issues the world's facing at the moment, is down to the fact that probably up until the last two decades, maybe three, uh, before that, there was a lot more struggle, mm. right? A lot more struggle to make money, a lot more struggle to, to do things uh, just in everyday life, you know, even just to survive a, an average life. There's a lot more struggle involved. 
And um, because of the comforts and the advancements, what we would call advancements, yeah. and they were yeah, to a degree, yeah. but everything comes with a negative. We've all become weak. We've all become lazy. We've all, you know, uh, we all strive naturally, our minds will, for comfort. But we've gotten so used to comfort that even small things that were normal just 20, 30 years ago uh, that were just assumed to be normal as well and, and were normal is now a problem, is now a stress, is now a struggle. Look at, let's take uh, even preparing our own food. So n back in the back in the day, if we go really far back, yeah. not well, probably not too far back, but uh, a decent amount of time, you would have to grow your food. Mm. You'd have to go to the farmer. If the, someone has to grow the food, yeah. and you'd go to them directly to buy it then, right? And then you have to prepare it and et cetera. Now, the next level up from that was now you had these huge fucking supermarkets. Now, the quality of food's gone to shit. That's another story. But you can go to the supermarkets. It's easier now. You just go around the corner. Get mm -hmm. the supermarket. It's cheaper as well because it's mass produced or whatever. So now it's easier. You go there and now. But now we take it one step further. Everyone's too lazy to fucking do that. They can just go order delivery and yeah. get a meal, a whole meal delivered to their door. They're paying more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're gonna get that meal because you're, you're the discomfort. Your mind, you won't, you won't allow yourself to do the steps or get in the car and drive to the supermarket. You know, some people don't even want to go online. Even it's even easier, but go online and order it online. They're just yeah. too late. Ah, delivery, Uber Eats. We're just weak society yeah, yeah. now and if understanding that the thing is like it might be some people might feel offended and probably they're the weak people getting yeah. offended but the truth is if you keep that in mind it's not used for motivation but it's to used to the fact that do you want to be one of those weak people do you want to be average uh, and do you want to be associated with that right and do you want to sort of give into that and continue to do that because all that does is will just feed into your life more and more mm. and understanding that you can choose to be better obviously people like to use the alpha uh, sort of tone and I like it because it is essentially what it is you're, you're adopting a higher mindset you're mm -hmm. you're choosing as you said taking action and understanding why you're trying to do it is because you want to achieve more and understanding as part of that is that the 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 comfort is the enemy right the comfort is enemy that's the thing that's almost forcing you when you do have some form of discomfort to feel mm -hmm. way more heightened because you yeah. put yourself into this ultra state of comfort when really it's actually getting used to the adversity. As you said, no one goes to the gym and afterwards it's like, ah, oh, I really hate it. Why did I do that? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They might feel the pain the next day and think, oh my goodness, but they feel good because they know, hey, this is growth. This is what growth feels like. like a lot of people, people say to me all the time, Riz, how do you do all the things that you do? Mm -hmm. How do you have the family? How do you uh, teach and mentor? How do you trade? How do you go to the gym? How do you do all these things and be successful still and still you know, do it every single day? And how do you find the drive when you're making the money to do it still? And I say like, look, at the end of the day, I feel tired. It's not like it's easy. I feel tired. I feel, you know, sometimes I'm in pain. Sometimes it's not easy. A lot of the time it's not easy. But the fact is, I know that I'm progressing. I know that I'm actually doing more. I know that my vision is getting closer and closer and closer because I'm doing that and making those sacrifices. And I enjoy the result of it, you know? And if I wasn't doing that, what, you know, I'm feel, gonna feel 10 times worse being fucking fat, lazy, yeah. broke, and having a daughter and a family who, they're probably going to, you know, my daughter's going to want someone else as their dad, not going to be happy with their dad. And my wife's going to want someone else as her husband because I have not provided or done anything worth sticking around for, being loyal to and, and providing to me to. You know what I mean? Why would they do their job? Well, my daughter doesn't have a job. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, why would she love me? Why would she want me around yeah. if I'm not doing anything for her or providing for her in a way or setting a, and as you say, if I'm not setting the right example, she's just going to take my laziness yep. as the example. Mm -hmm. And that breeds this weak culture and society we live in. And same with my wife. Why is she going to support me and do the things that are needed in the home? Because that's the arrangement that we have. Mm. Why is she going to do that if I'm not doing my side? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But people don't see that. They just see, as you say, they just see motivation. Oh, I just, you know, I just want to watch this uh, David Goggins video. Today. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or this uh, The bro. Rock yeah, or, or whatever it may be, and that's enough. And that will get you so far. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, I, when I was a teenager, that was amazing. Yeah, I'll be yeah, honest yeah. with you, if you're a teenager, because at the end of the day, what are teenagers taking in Kardashians? and Yeah, just bullshit. Yeah. If you can then take in motivational speeches, some good positive talk, that's all I did when I was like 13, 14, 15, 16. For those years, every morning and every night, I'll just watch motivational just videos. Watch, yeah. And it shaped my mindset mm -hmm. to be prepared for when the work was time, I understood what I needed to do. So I, I, there is a... There's a time and place in the beginning of your journey for it. Then it's just action. Then yeah. it's just embracing the fucking the trenches, the dirt. You know what I mean? And a lot of people just they want to avoid the trenches. They yeah, want to that's avoid the problem. Dirt. Is people, you know, it's getting to a point now it seems where people want to swerve that. So they're looking for the mentor or the education or whatever it is to not have to do that. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't believe that exists because no matter how good someone can teach, no matter how good someone can give you this skill, there are going to be moments, even if you were following signals, and let's say someone got you funded and it's running, it's gonna, you're going to see the numbers. They're going to be bigger than you're used to. You're going to be scared. F greed and FOMO are going to kick. Should I just close this? I don't know when the TP is. This guy might want to shut it now. He might have already. What do I do? You're going to experience things that that mentor is not going to be teaching you because he's just saying, buy this, sell this, do this, do that. How do you have the comfort to risk your money, your capital, your funded account on those things? And like you say, people come to me a lot of the time. They go, how do you have, even some of my missus friends say it. Why are you such a doer? Even silly things like around the house. <laughs> if, if I know recently we needed to have like our clean out of the house, the kids oh, another, another year and we were like, right, clothes, everything, we'll clean it out. People are waking up, they're dreading it, right? And even when my missus speaks to her friends, she's like, they're like, you know what, Abs, right? It's just cracking on. I'm in there, mate. I'm throwing clothes out. I'm building things. I'm just like, it needs to be done. Let's just do it. And I've always had that let's go. And it's come from, like you say, taking action, having a drive and desire paired with the pain points and paired with the vision and going, I can use this in all aspects of life. And that's what people forget. Trading teaches you so many habits and skill sets that you can take into just an I'm cleaning a house everywhere yeah. like you you can use them and i think that's what people are missing out on they're not just they're literally looking at the money and they're like it's why people that share let's say someone shares an 80 grand payout on ftmo they're going to get an influx of followers an influx of dms because people want to know what do they do what i've realized lately with things like twitter and whatnot kind of talking to other traders that perhaps i didn't know a lot of them their system is very simple their, their take profit system maybe even one to two Right, and to some people they're like, "What one to two? What the hell?" But that's their system, and I guarantee you, so many people have tried to replicate it, can't replicate it because it's not their system, and they're like, "Or oh, maybe it's a scam." One to two don't work. Like yeah, and and it's like, no, like it just shows you that no matter how you trade, and it's why I've always been an advocate of, I don't care what community you're part of, I don't care how you trade, I have respect for people that are trying to get somewhere in this industry because mm. there's too much hate on you got to be doing this right. And I've experienced it, you know, educating before. If I always felt like if I wasn't making enough R, I wasn't good enough. And people that I was helping or that were looking at me would go, oh, well, Al Bunny made that one to five, but this this Donny made one to 12. I'm going there because he's making more. And, and and you feel that pressure as an educator and you're like, I need to, I need to, do, and then you change your process. Perhaps you fall into that trap without realizing. Oh, 100%, man. And before you know it, you're like, these people don't actually care about me. Mm. Like this sounds horrible. This might sound deep, but those people that you help, the way you have to look at it from my perspective of having experience on both sides and, and helping thousands of people over the years now is that they're coming to you for a service. You're giving the service when they've got what they want, whether they want to stay friends and be, and be kind with you, that's, that's down to them. But you can't treat everyone as a friend because they will quite happily stab you in the back the oh. moment they can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I experienced that hardcore a lot this year. And, and they were, you know, things again that, even this year, I've learned so much more about myself that if when I started this trade journey and you said to me, you'll learn this, 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 I'd be like, no, nah, what you mean about me? Why would that happen? Why would yeah. that happen? You're having a laugh, aren't you? But it happens because, again, what, what I've noticed is people that can't find that success will just point the finger and blame X, Y, and Z. So when you show that I did this, they're like, fake or not real or yeah, whatever, because they're not in a position to do it themselves. Mm. They haven't got the drive. And it's like, Rather than, you know, sometimes I used to be quite bad. Someone write a, a, a shitty comment and I would be like, shitty back. I, I, and I got I nearly got banned on Instagram once. I told someone to put their head in a cement mixer and turn it on. And Instagram <laughs> didn't like it. Um, and they reported my comment and whatnot. And after that, I was like, right, this is the wrong way to go about it. These people are obviously hurting. These people obviously need something. So I try and talk to them now in a way of like, look, man, there's clearly something in your life that's bothering you. Like, dig into it, figure it out. You got this. But again, not everyone wants to hear that. And there are, unfortunately, there are some people here today that do not want to do that work and will never do that work. And they will live that life of just moaning and whinging about it forever. And look, if that's what you want to do, that's cool. But keep out of people's circles that are trying to do the thing. Mm. And I find like if people just got on board, surrounded them with the right people that are doing the things they want to do or, and not just looking at it with the mindset of, oh, well, if you're making that, you'd have a Lambo. What if I don't want a Lambo? Or you'd have a bigger house. I got a comment a few weeks back. If you made money trading, you'd have a bigger house. Uh, okay, cool. But I don't. So do you know what I mean? Like it shouldn't matter in terms of materialistic objects. It should matter mm. in look at the lifestyle that that person is able to live. Normally the people saying that don't have a house. No, uh, they don't. They don't have a house. They normally, this is a funny thing. A lot of people, when they, these comments come through, 
Like with me, my approach to these comments, I don't get them often, but when I do get them, I just delete them. <laughs> I just yeah, delete yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. I delete them. And if the person tries, like if they keep wanting to do it, I just block them. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's like, I'm not bothered. You know, if you knew me, I've had people actually, funnily enough, they've said before where you know, I thought you were a scammer. I thought you were a scammer. I thought you were fake, you know, and all this. And then I joined your community and you know, now they, they literally say, I love you. You know, you changed my life. You changed my perspective and shit like yeah. that. And I'm just like, wow. I didn't know. <laughs> First, I, like the big thing I'm wow about, I'm like, I didn't realize I could even come across as a scammer. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I don't mind. Like, I understand the industry. I understand the industry. And, uh, you know, like people could say to me, like, I don't, I don't think I've ever shown my house or anything, but people could definitely say to me, like, you live in a small house. But then I could turn around and say, well, it's a over 500k house yeah that's the thing in, se- in pretty much in central, central london. london so like yeah. do you think i give a shit if it's yeah. small or not like don't yeah. get me wrong i'm gonna outgrow it because my yeah. daughter's gonna need a bedroom so i'm gonna have to move anyway but do you think i give a shit what you think yeah, exactly. do you think i care you know like what does it matter you know stay in your own lane in that sense you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of educating though obviously i get it does come with the space of education because it's like people do want to make sure they're learning from someone who's done it mm. and that's why i focus on in the community, I focus on obviously, you know, here's, you know, here's the trades, you know, here's my trades yeah, I've taken yeah, yeah. in the community. I don't care about doing it on socials because no. I don't want to attract people for the sake that, oh, here's my trades, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'll talk about my trades. So like yeah. I talk like, you know, if I'm talking in general, like what I'm doing that day, I've said, oh, I traded Frankfurt, I lost today. I say it, or I won today and that's it. That's as far as I go. So I don't go like, here's my chart, here's this. Oh my goodness, I, I use this secret technique, <laughs> <laughs> this secret magical technique. I'm very, very careful even in the community of naming stuff. Uh, I try to avoid naming things. Sometimes I give it a label just because that's what it is. So like there's something I call a price range trap. And it's not because I'm trying to brand it as a price range trap. It's because if I was to explain it, that's what it is. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. If I was to explain it, it's literally like when price hasn't delivered a premium, let's say we're bearish, it hasn't delivered a premium, but price has some structural points before that, yeah, yeah. people would assume it's a break of structure and look for longs, mm. when really we haven't delivered the premium yet. So therefore I called it price rent trap. But I was very careful. Like every time I you talk about be, it, man. I'm like, this is not some source. This is just yeah. essentially <laughs> what it is, okay? Yeah, so yeah. don't go out there like, oh, I used the price range trap. That's, yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just always being very careful. That's definitely something we definitely needed to talk about was that obviously yeah. you had your trading journey, you, yeah, you found yourself, and I think very similar to me, kind of found yourself into teaching, probably because of the demand and probably because people wanted you to. Yeah. Uh, and also there's a passion there. There is yeah, an enjoyment, yeah, sure. I would imagine, there in teaching. So like, what it. was that like, obviously, you know, going into so teaching? So obviously for me, I went, I ended up at Phantom, mm-hmm. um, ended up at Phantom for, I was there for about, a year and a half ish. I was yeah. sort of there first week of launch and then was accustomed to this new world of smart money, if you like. You know, that was the the order blocks, all that sort of stuff. And then from there, developed pretty well, got my spin on a couple of things, and there was that op- option to just sort of do the one to one stuff. So I was like, yeah, cool. Like, I'll do some calls. Um, and I really enjoyed it, you know, hopping on a call. We were speaking about it yesterday, but like hopping on a call with someone, spending an hour, an hour and a half of your time delivering the way you trade, helping them in, you know, perhaps how they're trading. It was great. And then it got a bit hectic. Phantom was growing at a rapid scale and the calls were just mad. And I was like, I can't keep up. They're taking yeah, over they my had, life. They, had, uh, they got to around 2,500 members at peak, which to be fair, fair play to them. The way they'd done everything, the model, hats off to them. Do you know what I mean? They'd done very well with it. And they did deliver an incredible education they right they were, they were early, early to SFC. it they were very early and i believe that was one of the big things and also they weren't priced to you know make money they were priced fairly and yep. it was affordable for everyone mm-hmm. um so obviously i was doing one-to-ones there um did them for a long time and like i said and they got a little bit too much it was like you might have three four a day and i was like, i can't i can't do that it's too much and it was taken away from my trading so i was like no 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 and then kind of just sort of in the background but was like helping out in the discord doing things on the team if you like and it, it was enjoyable but then it got to a point where I started to grow more so myself and the YouTube started going well, the socials were popping and I was bringing in a hell of a lot of people to the business as, as a whole. And I think part of me was like, I want to see what it's like on my own, like on my own sort of business. What can I bring to my own kind of business, you know? And obviously at the point I decided to, you know, partner up with Sam and Lewis and go into hustle. And it was great. And, you know, I had some great times and I was able to, again, a lot of people would come from Phantom, they came to Hustle, you know, similar people, you know, a lot of people were gutted that I'd gone, um, you know, left a lot of people behind. But at the same time, I was like, it's a part for me to kind of 
level up and put yourself first you know yeah you have to you know you just have to think like i say when you look at the numbers of people that perhaps come in you work the numbers out you start thinking jesus christ like maybe i've got something i could do myself now obviously the hustle model we kind of built around it was a little bit different and perhaps capped that at the time didn't really focus on that it's funny because i've been really reflecting the last few weeks like i've had that that time to really reflect finally had the time yeah Yeah, and and like some of the things i was looking back on to my missus about and i was like there's definitely ways i could have done things perhaps different but you know, it is what it is. It was an experience. Um, it was good. But I think going into the role where it was actually a community now of my own took its toll, man. It really took its toll. Um, before, it found, like I said, I could switch off four o'clock mm-hmm. and it was like, see you later, catch you tomorrow. With Hustle, I couldn't do that. Every every hour of the day, there'd be an email, there would be a message, someone can't access a content or a payment's failed or they can't join or the website's down or whatever. Or just a question. Just a question, yeah. The DMs, the, hey man, what about this, what about that? Or charts, all the Zooms. We put on a lot of Zooms. We did like five Zooms a week and that takes its toll. And eventually, you know, I got to a point where, um, I got to a point where my trading was very, very good. I was consistent. I was making good money. And then I wanted that next level up. And I, I it's funny. That's, that's what comes from it. Yeah, I, I kind of deemed it. And this is where, again, on reflections, so this is hindsight, right? When, I, when I'd when i left Phantom, I wanted the level up because I realized I was giving and attending to a lot of people when perhaps wasn't attending to myself again. So I mm. kind of found myself in this situation again, right? And I wanted the level up. I wanted to sort of, you know, focus on me as a person. And what you don't realize is that in order to do that, you need to surround yourself with the people that perhaps are in a different level that mm. you want to aspire to be like. And, it, and not just in trading, but in aspects of different businesses, whatever it may be, looking to set up other things. And I didn't really do that. I went back to basically doing the same thing, but somewhere else, but it was my own and more time was taken to it. And it got to a point where it wasn't as enjoyable anymore. And I was having days where I was just like, this isn't as fun. Felt like a nine to five. Yeah, because I would wake up and the first thing you do in the morning, as you know, you're in the Discord morning, everyone. You know, what's up? How's everyone getting on? Then you're, you're posting a forecast or an outlook. Then you're talking about trades that people might have taken or answering questions on top of trying to do email stuff, maybe some social media bits, whatever. Then you're also trying to like get the kids ready for school, trade and work on anything else you want to work on. Be a partner, like go out with the missus. And I'm out with the missus and every five minutes, my phone will ding and I'm ding, like, ding, ding. sorry, babe, one sec. Or oh, she's talking to me and I'm like, uh yeah yeah, yeah. and she she's wants like to, she wants to stab you right? yeah and she's like you just said yeah 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 do you know what you said to her and i was like oh sorry what'd you say and i started thinking like hang on a minute i'm quite self-aware i was like this is shit like i'm i'm grateful for the position i'm in of course but at the same time is it going to benefit me long term and where's this going to take me in the, in the future and i and i started to establish that you know as much as i was able to help people and i made some great memories and and of course leveled up in certain aspects it wasn't leveling me up in the perhaps the pursuit that I was after. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I was like, I've got to make a decision for me now, not for someone else, not for what's best for a business, what's best for me, but also in terms of for the business, because people eventually will start to realize if you're on a Zoom and you're not feeling it, they're going to know. You know, people... Quality goes, doesn't it? Yeah. If the passion isn't there, that's why passion is everything. So if you have a passion for it, it works. Yeah. Right? And, And you have genuine intention. Now, you can have genuine intention, but the lack of passion starts to go. And then obviously the quality will start to go down naturally. And you're not doing it on purpose. No, no, no. If the drive isn't there, uh, as you say, people will begin to notice as well. So, you know, it's best for the business, best for you and uh, best all around. It's all about you at the end of the day in life as a whole. So, uh, you know, that's why I always say to anyone that whatever decision you make in life, it's your decision to make. Yeah. You know, I say to people a lot uh, as well that I speak to so many people where they're like, oh, my missus doesn't support my vision uh, in trading, yeah, I've had a lot you of know, that. or my missus doesn't want to move to this particular place, but I want to move there. And I'm always like, look, and when I say missus, it might be just a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. And I say, look, this is what you have to decide. You might love that person because you have to remember love is just chemicals. That's yeah, just a yeah. chemical balance in the mind using, you know, different factors. But the truth is though, if that vision is important to you, if you put that vision on hold or stop that vision for them, Mm. It won't, your relationship won't last yeah. because all that's going to happen in 10 years, 20 years, five years, one year, whenever you build resentment because you didn't get to do what you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And you will always think I could have done it. I should have done this. Yeah, yeah. And you'll just end up separating anyway. So you have to put yourself first. 100%. Right? Either you show them why the benefits, the negatives, you work out a, a reason, you work out some form, work something out, yeah. right? Or you say, look, this, the ultimatum for your vision. And that's not to, that's not being selfish. No, 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 of course. Right? It's putting yourself first. And it's the same with trading. Like, you know, in, in from teaching as well, the same thing. Where 
luckily I still have the passion for it, but I do find moments where I'm like, I don't enjoy this element, this element. You know, I'm not enjoying this element. I'm giving too much, yeah, yeah. right? Giving too much. And I've, I've really reflected on that myself and I've made massive changes in my routines, in my, uh, in how much I'm doing. Uh, and I've created a, this whole thing, like the pockets of wisdom. I, I just created this whole channel where, like I said earlier, I just put it all on a plate. Mm. Like no one can come to me now and say, what should I do? Because I've got it all there. there. They can ask me questions based on that. That's why I say, if you're going to ask me a question, make sure you've watched that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't taken the time to watch it, I don't want to know because yeah. you're just telling me you're lazy. Yeah. Right? Because before they had the excuse, because we covered everything, everything in that thing. Mm. It was all covered on webinars, yeah, 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 right? On videos and whatever. It's all there. But it's so easy for people to be lazy and say, ah, oh, you know, there's so many webinars. Oh, I used to get it all the time. We haven't yeah. labeled the webinars. There's no yeah, timestamps yeah, yeah. or whatever. And I'm like, okay, you should be watching them, but okay, mm. cool. So I thought, okay, how do I, how can I cut out this bullshit excuse that people use? How can I how can I cut out the lazy motherfuckers? And I say it all the time now, because I said, okay, I made the everything that was in the webinars that you would have to go and watch. I put them all into videos, like short videos. Short form, yeah. Yeah, nice little TikTok style, but not, yeah. not that short, but, but uh, short enough, right? And they're all there, labeled, da 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 da, mindset, da 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 da. It's all there, right? So now I literally say to people, there's no excuses. I say to people all the time, if you're not watching it, please quit now. Quit trading, yeah, 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 yeah. or at least quit the Vipers, or quit this group, and that's bad for business, right? Yeah, yeah, I say so. But I'll say, <laughs> I'll say it because what are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. Why are you paying? Why are you here? Because if you're not taking in this stuff right here that I've purposely gone out of my way to do, and the reason I did it as well is obviously, like I said, to free up time. Right? Mm. There's no excuses now. But eventually I'm looking to do the same thing because obviously you made the right choice to to leave. Uh, this hustle still is going, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, you've uh, you decided to obviously part ways out of the teaching space so that you can have your time. Focus but, on me, man. You know, how's it been? I know it's not been long, but how's it it's been? It's been sick, man. Like, I've just found a whole new world. Like, I want to say, obviously, big ups to Sam and Lewis because they were completely like, they weren't once like, you can't, or we don't want you. They were like, obviously, we're gutted, but that's your decision. We support you in it. And like, respect to them because not many people would perhaps in this day and age, they'd be like, oh, you're a dick or whatever. Yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were sweet. 100%. And obviously, we still chat a lot and we still remain friends, of course. But it was just that point where I'd been on holiday I'd experienced for the first time in two years a break from, I didn't have my, like, have my um, charts, I didn't have no trade shit, I was gone. And I was just like, whoa, this is the freedom I always wanted. I'm in a nice place, the kids are running around, we're swimming, we're playing. This is what I've always wanted. And I was like, well, trading gives me this. So why are you, because it's silly things, you know. Say you've got a Zoom at six o'clock, six weeks holiday, you're out on the Wednesday and you've got to get home at six because you have a Zoom. The kids don't understand that. Mm. They're like, but like, my, my youngest said to me, she goes, daddy, I thought you worked for yourself. And I'm <laughs> like, put it on you. <laughs> I'm like, rah, my little one, she's five and she's swinging, mate. Like, I was like, yeah, I do. She goes, so why do we have to go home? And I'm like, well, because uh, daddy does this and that. And she goes, right. You don't work for yourself. But you don't work for yourself. And I was like, you're five. Like, this is the thing. Kids rah. Are very, they're very wise, man. They put things in perspective all the time, mm. you know? I do the same thing. And it's so true, man. And honestly, like, that is one of the major blessings of having children, I think. Um, make you realize things man yeah man like you know like for me what i've realized as well is my daughter you know if i get home from gym you know i've been working all day doing calls all day and then i go gym and then i come home she doesn't give a fuck about the calls she nope. doesn't give a fuck about you know how much money she didn't care she didn't even know about money nah. the other day I, like anytime there's an advert on tv now she's gone to this age anytime like you know youtube and then like this toy advert comes home she goes i want to buy that and i say you know you want to buy that? I said, how much money you got? And she always just goes free. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first time she said it, she said three dollars. Yeah, and I was like, where's your dollars from? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> but yeah, she just says free. So she doesn't even understand money really. No, no, We're teaching cool. her about it. But like, this is what I mean. Like, kids do not give a shit about money. Mm -hmm. they, all they care about is time, love, attention. That's it. Right? Yes, you want to set an example. And you want to set a good work ethic. You want to set, you know, explain that things don't aren't easy to to attain success. But at the end of the day, especially when they're young, they don't give a fuck. No, no, right? they don't care, mate. And they, like you said, they'll call you. They'll easily call you out on it because if you're saying to them, "Hey, I work for myself. Your daddy's a boss. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Your dad's a boss. Your dad's a successful." But then you're having to come home to do a because Zoom or your yeah. They're gonna call you out. They're gonna yeah. question like that. Doesn't make sense. That's what right? she did. She literally did it. And, and my missus looked at me, started laughing, and I was like, <laughs> "Okay." I bet your missus like, loved it. Say it again. Say it again. Like, <laughs> the thing is, as well, like hats off to the missus because she's always back to any decision I made. She goes, "I'll support you in it, no matter what." But even this one, like, even she, you could tell she was a little bit more happier than perhaps other decisions because she was like, "So once you're wants. coming back, sort of thing." Because, like I say, man, you know, you'll be watching a film eight o'clock. We try and have like between eight and ten. We have our time. The kids go to bed. We're watching a film. 
And then something goes on in a community and you need to address it there and then maybe someone's, I don't know, something's happened, confused, right? You need yeah. to do it. So you're like, oh, this guy's joined, can't watch the content, he's paid, he wants to watch it, yeah, shit, yeah. I better help, right? So you're straight away, you're disrupting that specific moment to do that thing. Now, yes, I just want to say, yes, these people are paying for a service, so of course you have to do that thing. But you have to put both on the table and go, what's more important? I did this for my values of freedom, time with my family, Yes, I like helping people, but this is now coming at a cost because I'm now having to sacrifice that time. Six weeks holiday was a great example. Again, the kids are off, the missus is working, they're with me. Most days I'm like, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Or I'm like, I can't do this, I'll take the dough off, I won't trade, I won't do nothing. But then I'm like, well, I'm not going to make any dough. And that's now going to be an issue because I'm not around. So then you're like, well, how do I juggle it? And I, again, tweaking routines and structure. But it got to a point where it was like, if I just traded, I can wake up... At, Six, like I do, do my routine, trade eight to 10, be done at 10, let's go. Like we're done. And if I don't want to trade that day, we'll just go out. But I haven't got to go on my phone and do anything. And bro, honestly, the the creativity, the mental storage I've got now. Like, well, I can tell the, the energy mad, today and on, on the way you're speaking today as well. Like you, know, you can just tell there's an, an influx in energy and, and, a, and, a, and a change in that way. And it is very powerful. And I think it's essentially what you've done is you were, you, you obviously, you had the passion for teaching. And you you did it very well as well. It gets to a point where it's no longer empowering your life. It's actually doing the opposite, mm -hmm. you know. And essentially, by making your choice, you've then just re-empowered yourself yeah. to be able to have feel that energy, you know. And, and there's so much to be said to actually spending quality time with family. It does wonders that we don't yeah. realize, and we actually end up kind of being blinded to because of the, the blinders that get put on through teaching. Yeah, they do. Mate. Running an education space. Because I'm the same. Like I'm. For me, teaching wise, I love it. However, I only love doing it efficiently. Yeah. And I personally feel like, um, you know, like communities, if not done in the correct manner, they're not efficient. They're not. You know, and I'm always reflecting on how can I be. That's why, again, the pockets of wisdom thing, that whole idea was like more efficiency, more efficiency. But they'll get a point like where I've said over the next 12 months, probably, I'll probably phase out of the mass teaching in that way teaching the masses in that way um and i've always focused on mindset and i'm just going to focus continuously focus on mindset yeah because that is the source the holy grail that people talk about is just people don't want to hear it that's no, the truth no, about no, it don't, no, you can do it all day long but they don't want to hear it as you said earlier like you can post a profit split let's say youtube for example you post if you post a youtube video saying here's a one to a hundred trade or a uh, hundred percent made on a hundred k ftmo account with withdrawal proof, blah blah blah. I'm viral, bro. Exactly. Yeah, you 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 already know without even yeah. posting it. That's a you're probably going to be the biggest video you've ever done, for example. But if you post a video saying, "Here's the five mindset biggest lessons that I learned mindset wise <laughs> that got me to be successful," no one cares. No one cares. Yeah, nope. and it's just that just proves to you that people just don't have the right mindset. No. Right? They want to see they they want to see the drama, they want to see the, the flashy, the money, the, the they want the what's gonna get me this result now, you know? And the funny thing is by someone showing, okay, here's 100K that I got from FTMO, for example, and yeah, they may show a couple case studies, but what did they learn? What, the what value was in that other than they got to observe that that guy, whoever it is, that person made 100K, that person showed they made 100K, and that person showed me a couple case studies, mm. and that's it, while versus, Here's a video that shows me five different mindset hacks, mindset things to think about and perceptions that I could potentially take one, half of one, two, maybe all five. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that one video ends up shifting your whole mindset. So like me, like I remember when I first started watching Joe Rogan's podcast years back, I don't really watch it nowadays, uh, but back then when it, when he was still, he was probably still the biggest podcast in the world, but it wasn't, not many people were into podcasts. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about five, six years ago, no, longer, six, seven years ago now, yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember I watched one with uh, Russell Brand, I think his name is, yeah, that yeah, yeah, comedian. Yeah, yeah. So he was on there and he talked about perception in terms of like how people perceive things differently. And even though now to me hearing, that, you know, me saying it now, obviously I've, I've understand it to a degree and I thought, you know, it's kind of obvious now, but back then it wasn't obvious to mm. me, that 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 uh, that viewpoint. Yeah. So listening to that changed my whole, that one, and it wasn't even the whole podcast, that was like what, 10 minutes, specific five minutes? Point, yeah. That specific point shifted my whole mindset and allowed me to unlock a whole different, you know, understanding on people yeah. and understanding how, you know, and, and then applying that to trading because that was literally when I was literally starting trading, mm. applying it to trading and understanding very early on that, 
people see things differently. Mm -hmm. You know, like how often is it that you know, I see it all the time and running communities is a benefit to us to be able to observe the masses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you observe how one student or, or let's say five students on this side are saying the market's so choppy, I can't see anything. And then there's five students on the other side slapping trade after trade <laughs> after trade, yeah? yeah? They love it. But they're looking at the same pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Same time frames, everything. Mm -hmm. But yet, it's perception. These people can't see it clearly and that's fine. They should not be entering the market. These people are smashing. This is their time the, with, where their perception is hitting. They need to be smashing it now. And then what happens normally the week after or two weeks after is they switch places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And so, yeah, like, it's so important, you know, to be able to just understand that it's the nuggets. It's the value. Chase the value. Don't chase the, yeah. the, 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 the flash, you know, the flashy, the, 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 you know, oh my goodness, let me see if I, if I watch this guy, don't get me wrong. That's motivation. That's the difference, right? Yeah. yeah. It's motivating to yeah. see someone do some great shit. Yeah. But where's the value in it for you? Yeah. It can motivate you, mm. but while this piece of content over here that is designed to give you value and will, maybe not the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah Just like course. the book. There'll be bits. It'll, yeah. And, uh, but that's why I did like when I obviously, you know, uh, documented getting the FTMO back recently. Mm -hmm. I did it in a way where it was like, well, there's a challenge done. There's verification. There's a payout. But I did it in a way where it wasn't flash because I'm not someone that wants to do that. And I also believe we live in a world now where you do need to be careful on what you post because people, again, as I was shared like the other Yanni. night with Yanni, yeah. that shit's been real and I've known about it for quite a while. And it's like, I don't want to put that on my kids, on my missus. I don't need that life. So I've always been like, I'm not sharing it. But I shared something to showcase one, like I've always said, get risk off on the challenge, get your money back, get a small payout, whatever, do it. So I was happy to share it. And someone messaged me like, why are you sharing this stuff if you talk about this and that? I was like, because if you watch the video, every single part of the video at some point, there is nuggets from it that I said, this is how I come back from the loss that happened to me. And I wanted to document it, one, for myself, because mm -hmm. it's a part of the journey, but two, because I knew someone somewhere is going to take value from going, right, okay. So not only did I come out and go, I fucked it up, I blew the FTMO up, I now want to show you how I'm going to get it back. And for me, it was a little mini series I ran, which did well and I got a great feedback from. But it's funny how some people use that against you and go, you shouldn't have lost it anyway. And I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe there's a case for maybe I shouldn't have lost it anyway. Not but even just that like, oh, you didn't pass it in one go. Oh, you had uh, some a little bit of loss there. Oh, the, uh, the risk to reward uh, shows yeah. that it wasn't 10 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. And I'm just like, like, I get it. But at the same time, for one, transparency. I came out to 25,000 people and went fucked up. And I'm cool with that. Cause again, for me, self growth, honest, I've built that brand on let's be honest with people. Let's share part of trading. This can happen, it's fucking real. Mm. So let's show it. But then I also showed how to come back from that and the things I would do it, I was doing. But all everyone did is the trade, all the comments were, oh, that trade, yeah. How did you get in that trade? And a lot, of, not many people were like, oh bro, that little bit about the mind bit set or the routine you changed or this, I love it. There was a couple. But I can sift through it now and I've noticed that when I post, I can tell now straight away in the first hour, you know, you get like, you get like your metrics in the top 10. Yeah. I know what's going to jump in the top five straight away and what's not. And it's all about titling. And I did it this week. I titled it a little bit different. Boom. And everyone's like clickbait. I'm like, it's not clickbait. It's about that topic. I just said it in a different way. And I literally put prop our prop firms over and I look miserable. People are watching it like, what? Prop firms are over? Oh my God. And it was, I was just giving my view on it. And then MetaTrader disappeared. And then, oh my God, bro, I've seen you. the future. <laughs> <laughs> it was you. Oh, oh shit. Man. It's um, so true though, man. Like, what I've realized as well, obviously being in the teaching space is that, you know, everyone who points fingers and tries to do this bullshit of like, you should never have done that or anything. 99% of the time, they're people who never tried to help another person in their fucking life. Like, nah. you know, they might maybe, you know, answer some DMs or something like that, but they're not even trying to, teach other people and that's their choice that's fine mm. but how are you going to shit on someone who is trying to teach people and then as you say is transparent right majority of people they would blow that account they would never, all they have to do is never say anything no yeah. one knows any better no one but has the, to know exactly and the fact that you come out and say hey i blew this account and it sucked but that's it yeah i blew it this is what yeah. i'm going to learn from it and and that's the thing like that was a pivotal part again in my journey where i'm like right okay why did you blow it dug into it and i was like okay your time's here your time's there your time's this you're not focusing on you this is another another factor to perhaps why you need to get out of this because trading is my bread and butter and trading was a skill I've spent years working on. So yes, I like to help, but at the same time, I got to help me. And that was another tick in that box. And then the boxes just kept ticking. Mm. And before you knew it, I had a box full of ticks and was like, you can't really bottle this now. You've kind of got to do it. And that's where the decision came. And like I say, I wanted to obviously just pursue being a trader. I wanted to pursue the YouTube, which I found a real passion for. Mm. 
and just see where that goes and look into other projects. How can I set things up in a way where I don't have to give it so much time once it's initially out there? Digital things, you know, I, I follow a lot of entrepreneurs and I speak to like Ali Abdown, people I've done his course. I'm meeting up with him next week. And like the things he has, he has so many different passive incomes, if you like, that he's made a course for camera confidence. He's posted that out. And then people will buy that course and he's just doing its thing in the background. He's got another one for how to edit a video. It's just doing its thing. You know, Olia, another guy, he sells like wallpapers and how to build a website. And they're only cheap, $9, but they just add up over time. And I'm like, I'd like to slowly somehow develop some things like that where I can go, well, here's a bit of knowledge, but I haven't got to sit here answering loads of questions. There'll be a video with it. There'll be this and that. There you go. You want to buy it? Cool. But like straight away when I announced I wasn't doing it, everyone's like, so you're going to do your own thing? And I was like, no. Like the whole point is to not do this. Are you going to do one-to-ones? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not doing one-to-ones anymore because I did them and again, time consuming. Well, the thing, let's, let's, let's revert it back to what we were just talking about. And that is transparency, you know? Yeah. In terms of like, look, people were there pointing fingers saying, ah, you shouldn't do this. Oh, you can't be a good mentor or a good trader if you, uh, if you uh, blew the account or whatever it may be. And they try and come out with all this drama and conspiracies yeah. and all this, all this judgment. But yeah, some of those people, so we talked about the people who aren't trying to teach people. Yeah, some yeah. of those people were teachers, yeah? Mm. And yet, they just got into teaching, right? So, and yet they're trying to shit on other people who were teaching. For a lot so, longer. Exactly. And then the fact that that person now has stopped teaching proves, if anything, that that person trades and now is full-time and is able to do whatever the fuck they want. And yet, this person just got in, or these people just got into trading. Uh -huh. you know, just got into uh -huh. teaching, sorry, should I say. And they're trying to shit on other people. You know what I mean? It's the, it's, that's because it's clout. Oh yeah, it's just clout. It's just uh, it's just drama. It's just just, just hate. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, like trading and just generally in life, you know, if you have room to give an opinion on this person, I don't think there's ever been a time in my life where I've given, gone out of my way to give an opinion on someone else. Nah. If someone's tried to come for me, I'll give them the truth back. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Self defense. That's all I ever yeah, do. Like I box. I never attack people. No, if someone if hits someone you, you're gonna hit them back. Exactly. Live. Right. But if someone goes out their way to give their opinion, right, and they use it as the guise of I'm trying to, I'm self righteous, and I, you know, I'm someone who should be listened to and be respected. It's like a, a manipulation technique. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um, yeah, like I said, with these people, it doesn't matter who they are. I just block them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> block, yeah. Block. Yeah. Block. It's block. Not worth the right. Bag. Because at the end of the day, again, it's the same principle. Like. You've stepped away. Now what? Now they're not going to talk about that. No, no, no. That no, would no. that would that would actually disprove what they were saying. So yeah. they're not going to talk about oh this person stopped because you know why would they if they couldn't afford to stop because obviously that's all they make their money from. Yeah, that's, then, that's what I mean. Like, and that's the thing. Like when I you know doing it, it wasn't even a case of like oh but there's extra pennies coming in. Everyone here knows. Yeah, you make money from a community. But like I've always said, when you actually add it up and you understand business mm. and you work out corporation VAT, then your own taxes, overheads, whatever it is. You work out that just making like a one to five on 100K, you're good. That's better. And it takes a hell of a lot less stress than doing that. Yes, it's nice that money can come in. And like I say to people, if you want to do that, by all means. But understand the sacrifices that it will have on your trading and on your actual life mm. and work out if the, cost, if the cost is worth it. And it's funny, like you say about people, because a lot of people that fire shots or say what they got to say, I have DMs from them saying, you changed my life, bro. And I just sit there and look at it and I'm like, all right, cheers, bro. But then I've got messages of you saying whatever. Say, yeah. And it's funny. And, and like I say, I, you can go on a rampage and out people and there are different personalities probably would have just gone, let's go then. But my personality was like, oh, I'm not bothered. Like, I'll do my thing. I don't. I do the one where it's like, because like what happened with uh, a situation recently was I decided I didn't want to be involved in any drama. So I distanced myself. And for some reason, that was the the spark to, to cause the drama. It always tends to be that right? way. And it's very weird. So I was like, okay. So, you know, your issue was that I didn't come to you and, and, you know, decide like to speak out with you and I don't really know you anyway. And now, now that makes me a scammer because I decided, I decided your issue isn't my issue. So I'm going to go over there and you can do your thing. Cool. And I've never said anything bad about you anyway, but cool. So now you want to do it. I said, cool. Like, I even said to that person, come to the podcast. We was talked face to face. I, I said, I'll come that. to, I'll come to your, you know, I'll come to you, not in a fighting way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come to you. This is the funny thing, right? I said, I'll come to you. No problem. They're saying, why would I want to see you? Blah, blah, blah. Online, they're not, they're, they're saying online, like, oh, he's a scammer. They're not, they're saying all sorts of craziness. They even mention my family, right? right. Oh, cool. I keep my cool. I'm like, cool. And I'm offering 
personally, I'm not saying it online, I'm saying to them mm -hmm. directly, hey, you want to meet, you want to talk, whatever you want, you tell me, no problem, we'll speak face to face. Reason being is two reasons. One, the energy they're trying to give on text and online, they're never going to have in person. No, like they're never going to be saying the shit they're saying. Of course they're not. They're going to be nice and calm and if anything, shitting themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Or at least being more humble, mm -hmm. right? Second thing is if they really had that energy in person, if they want to scrap it out, they can scrap it out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sitting here saying I'll knock out every motherfucker, but I'll tell you one thing, I can fight. Yeah, yeah Right? Yeah, and I'll, sure. I'll, if I'm going to lose and I get knocked out and I don't care, it's going to be a good fight. Yeah. Here's the other thing though. Here's the funny thing. So that particular person, right? They're saying all this shit like, I don't want to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Never mention nothing about fighting words or any sort of energy like that, right? In their community, because the fact is they think that they're the best and everyone loves <laughs> them. Someone sends me a screenshot. In the community, they're like, this guy wants to meet. Does he want to get knocked out? And I'm like, boy. That's embarrassing, mate. I'm like, boy, why say it to these random people? Because when it's... Here's the community. Here's me asking you, do you want to meet? Yeah, and I'm just like, it just proves everything. That's all I need to know. I don't, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I need to know, you know? And I don't, like, I don't, the drama, it, it's not fun. It's really not. Like, it's That's not boring. enjoyable. It's boring. It's fucking annoying. It gets in, like, if, if apparently everyone's here to teach, why is it even happening anyway, right? But like, it was just funny to see once again, just the usual psychology of, of people, you know? Yeah. And um, when you have that alpha, that, that, that strong mindset, you're, you have no time at all to worry about what other people have to say. Yeah. You don't have any time to feel tired. You don't have any time to feel in pain, right? Yeah. All you have time for is to focus and get your work done and progress, right? So if you have time to do those things, you obviously aren't doing certain stuff. Like, you know, you're obviously not working hard enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you have time to reflect and go, oh my goodness, this person is a scammer or this person is, uh, is you know, I don't like him. You know, I'm going to tell him I don't like him. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. You obviously don't, you know, have too much time. You obviously yeah, yeah. aren't working or hard enough or, or doing something because I don't have time. I tell you that right now. I don't have time to even scour. You know, some people send me like, have you heard of this prop firm? I'm like, how did you hear about it? Because... Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, uh, yeah. how, have you heard about this community? I'm like, no. Like, I'm, some people have asked me before, like, do you recommend a community for me? I'm like, I don't. I can't. Like, if I did, I would. I wouldn't mind recommending other communities if they told me what they wanted. But the fact is, I don't have time to go sit there researching communities and shit. The thing or is, the industry. Well, like, if you want to, if you want to know, go and figure it out yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I used to hate that. I mean, I get it a lot still. Even now, people have sent me stuff going, bro. Have you seen this? So and so's doing this, and I'm like, cool. Why do I care? They're like, oh, but you were you were involved with them in this. And I'm like, so? Like, it's not, I don't give a shit. Like, and I, like I say, it come back to realizing that all these internet friends that people think they've got will shit on you at the first sight when they get a chance. Mm. So it's really important. If you want to build friendships, build them properly and don't just build this like, you know, you, we all get it. Oh, hey, bro, can I get close to you? Can we be friends? And then slowly it'll be like, so can we jump on a Zoom? Can we go over this? And I used to be like, yeah, no worries. And then I realized actually, when I had a moment where I was in a bit of shit, not many people checked in like, you're right, bro. They were like, ha, I got it. And I was like, oh yeah, it's like that. And it made me realize that it isn't worth getting so in bed with all these different people. It's just, there's no benefit to it because- bro, Before I met you, I was in my own lane, yeah? yeah when yeah. I met you, I, I, this different world opened up where I met like, uh, came across all these different people. And don't get me wrong, there's some <laughs> yeah. gems, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Absolute yeah. gems. You know, like uh, people like Marshy, Pat, uh, Mansa, absolute gems yeah, yeah. I to come across. And then you get a few people who are just like, they're just weird energy, man. Like weird, different feelings, you know, and like they definitely have different intentions. And you can just get it. You just like, just talking to them, like you get this vibe where you're like, there's something going on here. There's not like, and the funny thing is, it's actually the opposite. They weren't like giving yeah. a vibe where like the, 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 the kind of showing signs of hate. It was the opposite. They were just being too fucking nice. Yeah. Like trying to big you up and, and suck you off too yeah, much. Yeah, you get it all the time. Yeah, and you're just like, why it's are you weird. acting this way? Yeah, like yeah. I don't, I can be cool with people and I'm yeah. like, yeah, you know, bro, you're doing some sick shit, you know, and I'm really appreciating it. And, and, you know, I, I uh, look up and admire your work ethic, you know, that's cool saying it like that. But saying shit like, you're the goat, man. Like, I look up to you. You're the best, you know, yeah, you're the, yeah. the trading god. And I'm just like, why are you talking in that way? I don't want to be the trading god. Yeah. And I'm like, but why, why are you? Like, I don't know yeah, anyone yeah. who talks like that. That's a bit weird. It's because they want, they, they feel like they're the messages that will get through to you and mm. you'll respond in the way of, oh yeah, let's, let's hook up. Yeah. In, yeah. And then when they realize it doesn't work, they, I, I've had it where people will send that message and I'll, I'll be on it and I'll see it because I haven't replied. It will get unsent and I'll get, <laughs> you're a prick. And I'm like, whoa, I was the goat a minute ago. What happened? And it's because you didn't give them what they want. Or I'll get people messaging me, hey, bro, I need 50 quid for a prop fund challenge. Can you give me it? And I'm like, sometimes I'll be like, look, bro, like for starters, I don't even know you. I don't just give money to people. If you'd approach in a different way, 
maybe we'll talk about it, but you didn't. You don't even know me. You don't even follow me. And you, oh, want, and you want that. They're the worst. And then they're like, oh, yeah, you're a prick. I thought you was. And I'm like, so you are, you come to me for 50 quid and now you're calling me a prick because mm. I, like, I don't like it. And that's why, again, it's like, you know, YouTube for me was the one because you can post your shit. You can help people that want to be helped. I love Twitter, man. Do your thing. Twitter's decent. YouTube and Twitter are amazing. Twitter's good. Like, like, Twitter's just like a vibe. Like you just put your thoughts on there. There are some great people there. The funny thing is when I joined Twitter, there was this big beef with like ICT and all oh, the shit. It was chaos. Stuff. Yeah. Was chaos. I was but, getting tagged in stuff and I was like, please don't bring me into this. <laughs> I don't want to be involved. Like Honestly, I was like, well, I just came over here to avoid drama and get away from drama. Yeah, I heard it was drama. healthy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then yeah. Uh, apparently Twitter has this feature where you can like block keywords. So okay. like I remember someone, seeing someone like block ICT as a keyword so they didn't have to see it all and I was like wow if only Instagram had such a thing yeah if Instagram I know you can do it with comments on Instagram but that's beside the point point. and YouTube you can just hide a user from channel and they, they can never comment again but they, yeah that would be nice to have keywords it's funny man like you say you know I, like I said to you before and we, we've both spoken about it before and I remember I put it out on Twitter and quite a few people were interested but I generally feel like some way shape or form we've got to try and figure out the thing is like you just said though when it comes to it people's asses will fall out but I'd love to set up or merge or get involved somehow with that. You know, like the YouTube boxing they got going on. Mm. I'd love to do something with FX. Honestly, the best way is to just get uh, get into the YouTube boxing, and then as soon as you're there, people want the clout. So these people will come back and be like, you know, bro, it's sick. I, honestly, the YouTube events, I watch them and I they they crack me up. They're so well it put was together. The now. It's the next phase, bro. I'm telling it is. You, I think it's becoming a thing, man. Because of especially because of this recent event with uh, KSI. And the actual quality of knockouts. It was mental. Right? The quality of fights that were taking place. Especially, uh, what was his name? Soul Pappy, man. Like, I don't know. Guy's got name. hands, bro. That was savage. That was literally like, he's from the Philippines, I think, as well. So, yeah, yeah, literally yeah. Manny Pacquiao vibes. Like, oof. Um, but yeah, because of that one, I definitely see why it's going to continue to grow. It's just a no-brainer in terms of fine, you know, in terms of business. Yeah, oh, right? yeah for sure. Um, you know, all these YouTubers who have these audiences they hold the power already. So if they're just using their own audiences to put their own YouTube uh, boxing events on. The, the, they're selling out insane. arenas that you know, professional boxers can't sell out. And exactly, like yeah. Eubank was saying, you know, there are professional boxers, perhaps first fight, second fight, they're working a full-time job still, and they're just trying to fight on a card. And you've got people coming in here, f selling out the O2, and like just delivering a performance. Like you've actually got boxers, like that Hassim Jr. has now gone into YouTube boxing yeah. full time. Like he's yeah. like, I want a bit of this because one, the money is just mental. Makes sense. And two, like you say, from a business standpoint, you can do that whole beef on Twitter and some of the YouTubers, they go in on YouTube, like swarms lately with his little dish tracks he drops. It's the guy's loving it. He's gone and got 70K followers on it on YouTube like that. He got knocked out being like Bambi against KSI. But now he's like, I'm going to use this to my advantage. He's fighting on the next card. Mm. I'm telling you that that's the thing and it would be it would be so sick to like get into that and then if the, like you say if there ever becomes a problem in it it's box just, just I think it's it. the best way because what what does the internet talk or do like, it don't do, do anything, anything. Yeah. it drives a little bit of traction I remember a few a few years ago at Phantom there was a um, there was beef with another community and it was funny because every time they beefed us and we retaliated they got more subscribers they got more members and it was like they did it when they needed like members or whatever <laughs> so they would just cause a scene and you'd naturally go now nah, fuck you and then you'd see their numbers going up and i'm like hang on these guys are benefiting from this and that's when i realized that like, when someone calls you out or says something mm. the retaliation is what puts eyes on them yeah, which yeah. gives the cloud that's why a lot of people i remember wwa did it with uh ict yeah, that'd be um, thing, didn't they? You know, and, and that's why I think people do it with ICT because ICT, I don't know him personally. I think he definitely has some good knowledge, but he's he's like a, just a, seems like a bit of a wacky personality for that. Yeah, yeah I don't for, really for being the age he is, right? Yeah. But fair play to him, whatever. Like, um, but I definitely know people purposely will try and attack him so that clout comes. You know, that they, they get the followers, they, they tap into it, and they increase yeah. their business. Um, but rather than that, yeah, I prefer the other way. I prefer like, look, we got issues. We are, we can meet in person, but why do that when we, you know we the can fact make is an event from it? Yeah, exactly. Like the fact is, you wanted to do it publicly, so why not do it publicly, do it publicly in, in a ring? ring. Yeah. yeah, where it's legal, where it's safe, where and you get to do a press conference. You can talk shit. Right, it'd be so yeah. good, man. I well wanted. I it. think it's needed, but I just oh, feel man. like people. You know what it is? Is the fact the truth is the people won't. You know, like you say, a lot of people they talk all this game on socials and they won't uh, back it up anyway. But then on top of that, they know they'll lose more than likely. And it's too yeah, much of a yeah, risk. Yeah, like, when you see some of these YouTubers getting completely KO'd and they're becoming memes and that, it's damaging their reputation straight away. Like, <laughs> like, some people are getting folded in half like a deck chair and they're like, whoa. You know, and I, I get it. But 
I think like like you said, that's the way it's going. You gotta back it up. You gotta it? back yourself. Like and not only that though, look at it from a different perspective. If you're going into camp, let's say you, you're having a fight, you've got twelve weeks camp, the 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 health benefits for mm. people, the the exposure, the business from it, the attraction on the on the sport itself, it'd be huge. Mm. And it's like Well that's what I'm doing at the moment, bro. I'm in the fight camp yeah, now. I know. That's why uh I came back from Amsterdam. I was about 120 kg uh, when I came back. And I'm 110 now. What do you want to fight? In about at? six weeks. Uh, probably like 90. Okay. Around 90 kg. But I'll fight it anyway if I need to. But yeah, I'm going to do some white collars and then get into the YouTube boxing next year. And for me, it's not about the money. I just want to. No, no, no. I just want to do it. I love boxing. Sick. I want to push myself. And I think it would just be great to, you know, be able to impact more people, you know, getting on a platform like that. I've always. The funny thing is, when I was a kid, I envisioned myself. And obviously, the vision has changed. Because back when I was younger and a teenager, I was very much a, a very uh, strict Muslim, mm. right? So I always envisioned myself being like Muhammad Ali, you know, like being a boxer and having a, a stage, a platform to speak on and, and sort of not promoting being Muslim, but like just being a voice for young Muslims and uh, yeah, just yeah, Muslims as a whole. I'm less religious to very toned down religious uh, completely, but the vision remains the same. I want to just help people, you know, mm. I want to... I want to help spark that change. You know, so many people suffer. And a lot of it comes down to what we were talking about earlier about, you know, just a weak society, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. And the main reason why we have a weak society is because of the lack of awareness on why that's happening. And therefore, by having a platform, that's the best way to do it. You know, the best way to do it is by having a platform. And nowadays, platform is... By, uh, by building an audience. So I've been building an audience very nice and slow, <laughs> nice and slow through the podcast, yeah, through same. Instagram and so on. Uh, you've done very well though. You've done very, very well. And, yeah, um, I, I, thanks man. I feel like some days I feel like oh, it could be more for the time, but that's the thing when I, when I say again, you can't look at the time. You can't, yeah. It's like trading though. It's like trading. Like, you know, uh, a lot of people's psychology, their fear and greed all stems from the fact that they um, oh, I love thinking too short term. Yeah, you know, oh, I took a loss this week. You know, or I, I took a bunch of trades and I ended up with like minus one percent. Mm. But if if you look at that one week in comparison to if we're talking about fifty something weeks in a year, if you're trading for say two twenty years, so two decades, you're talking a lot of shit ton of yeah, weeks, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so sure. like one week out of that. What's that? You know, and the, yeah. if we're thinking about it, really, there's going to be multiple weeks yeah, like that in that journey. Uh, so same thing with the the socials. That's the only thing that kept me going as well. Is I like, look, and plus, like, I think the same mindset with you, maybe, and myself. It's not we're not really focused on that. That's not you know, it's not like uh, in our heads, like, oh, you know, I want to have a hundred k subscribers. That's going to make me feel nah. this, that, and the other. It's more so like I want to impact a hundred thousand people. Yeah, I want to I want to have eyes on that what I'm delivering the word can get out there because I look at some channels and it was funny again on Twitter this was being spoken about the other day there are some channels spreading absolute bullshit. Mm -hmm. And All the time. and they've got the you know the most views and I'm like oh man like I wish I could get some of them people here mm. and give them a, an actual like I said like you talk about that loss normalize losing. Like he's normal. Some months you might end in drawdown. Like I say to people look at hedge funds. Sometimes I was talking to a guy the other day he reached out to me on uh, Instagram from from a YouTube video and he was like I you know got told to have a look and that and he was like uh, I, I run a hedge fund and work for a hedge fund or whatever and he was like you know we're, we're looking at like 2% a month. That's like a, a great month for us. Mm. And he's like, some months we might end down a percent or whatever. And I was like, that's the thing. And that's the scale where people could get to where you're working or managing hedge fund capital in mm. the in the multi-millions. And it's okay to go, oh, you know what? I had a bad week, took a loss. But guess what? It's probabilities. The wind's come in. And I think that's that kind of, this is where for me, smart money, I hate using that, but it's just how you describe it. Mm. But I feel like that is where it kind of did us all a bit of a bad turn in in kind of terms of like, Smart money with the RR that's possible and, and whatnot, it's almost like if you take a loss or you're in drawdown, you're shit. Or people can't accept that they've lost. And and I searched for that early on in trading. I always felt like when you took a loss, you were like, you dig into that and you try and refine it. I don't want to take a loss again. But then when you get to a point of place of mind where you're like, that is part of my edge. Did it fit the edge yet? Cool. Right. So there's no need to refine it. We could log it. There's no need to refine to how to remove it because the next one could be identical but win. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and I think that's where people go wrong is they they go into the refinement of the loss so much that then their edge changes. And then that same trade comes. They won't take it. It works. They take a new edge. And now that one, the probabilities of that edge has a loss come in. And they're like, I took a couple of Constantly. Loss. Bang, bang. And it bang, just keeps bang, happening. Yeah. And then they're like, I'm 10 losses deep. And I'm like, well, you probably just changed your edge nine times. Mm. If you stayed with the original one, you'd be good. And I think, like you say, you know, the same with socials. You, you do just have to keep hitting them, delivering the value. For me, I enjoy it. That's I, what I, I mean, love man. it. You want 
you want you don't want to have a hundred k subscribers. Like that's not what you want. You no. want to have a hundred k subscribers based on because you provided value. Yeah. Because otherwise, if you want to do hundred k subscribers, one you could buy it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what majority yeah. people do. Uh, but the other way is that you just put on what you know people are going to just go to. Like you said, like you could easily. How easy could it be? Let's be honest, right? If we wanted to do it the fastest way, mm. we would literally do all the scummy fucking behavior with like demo MT4s, yeah. uh, do like a 5K to 100K yeah. bullshit. Go and rent a Lambo for the thumbnail. Yeah, do all this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. No, like literally easy. Like everyone knows, even the people who aren't educators know if they wanted to you know, become a uh, social media you know, star yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. how to do it. It's the fucking yeah. easiest thing in the world. But if you want to do it right, you want to do it with genuine intention and you want to do it with value, it's a slow game. Yeah, it is. It's, it's slow. a slow game, but it's working. But I feel like that brings a longevity in your audience too. I feel like your audience will respect yeah. you and, they, and they'll and they also have that that want to watch. And it's like, I realized recently that some of my first few videos were a little bit on trade stuff and I, I kind of got an early audience mm -hmm. on the trading format. And then recently I was digging into it and I was talking to my missus, I was like, well, I want to take this YouTube channel to like real heights. I really want to have it as a, as a second business. I want to treat it like a business and, you know, I have to look at it and go from a content perspective, which I said to you before, there's only so many trade related videos I can make before I've made the same video on repeat. Mm. So I have to start looking at what else do I want to deliver? And I'd like to, again, hit some more podcasts up, but also deliver a bit more lifestyle stuff, some vloggy stuff, different vibes, course, yeah. tech bits, just things that I'm also into because... I don't want to just be like that because I feel like, and this is not horrible to anyone. And I know I've got some real genuine followers, but there are a lot of people in the trade space. They just come and subscribe for pure source. And when I announced I wasn't doing pure source, I saw a decline in subscribers that day. Like a hundred people went and I was like, fucking hell, what the fuck? But I was like, I'd rather they go. I don't want that kind of follow. I want the ones that are there for the journey. They're there to see you grow and develop. And they're a part of that because that builds a, bit, a bigger brand mm. that... You can, you know, do, I don't know, giveaways or meetups. I see people doing meetups with people and they're like, look, come, to, we'll do a meetup. We'll get people in a room. We'll just chat. We'll, we'll grow. We'll develop. Kind of like what you guys did with with your last meetups, you know, that sort of stuff. I want to build an audience like that, not an audience where they're only there because you're going to talk about what's a chalk or what's a flip or how do I get in this minimum, maximum RR trade? I don't, I don't want that. And I said to people, there's plenty of that shit on the internet. If you want that, go and look for it. But I want to deliver like the realities of being a trader, you know, the things you don't realize. But like I say, sometimes you put those videos up and they tank and you're like, the fuck, that video was the one. Yeah. But then you'll make a video that's not perhaps you're feeling the one and, then and it will just boom. And, and like Gary Vee always says, you know, you're one piece of content away from changing your life, but you just don't know what that is. Mm. And that's where for me, I've been going a year now. I've now increased to twice a week, which is I've got the time to do because I've got the time now. But even still, I've, you know, I try to plan videos ahead, like just working out what I'm going to talk, um, what the it's topic is. It's a hard is. task. It's a hard task, you know, and you run out of things to, to talk about. You run out, bro. Yeah. And that's why I ask questions. I try and get like a little bit of market research on Twitter or Insta. I ask quite like, what do, what do people think about this? To try and make a video on it. Mm. But I find myself now sometimes I'm like, I said that last week and I'm kind of talking about it again and I don't want to have to do that. So that's where like the vloggy stuff. Um, just mixing it up. Just yeah. mixing things up. The truth is some people like they don't realize They'll think, oh, you just you want to be an influencer or that. But in uh -huh. terms of business, people don't realize. Even I didn't realize, and literally until this last week, I knew there was power in it. Uh, but in terms of literally just the views alone, um, and how much that can generate. So someone does someone does a uh, there's loads of pages like this, but I came across one randomly where they do a breakdown of the uh, monetization, how much it's being made, and they did one of that that speed guy. I, can't remember, I don't know what uh, his actual I show is. speed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he has three channels, I think, yeah. three main channels, and across all three of them in a month. He made he makes seven hundred k. Yeah, yeah. Right, seven hundred k, and I was like, what the fuck? I didn't think that. Right, I knew that obviously mil per million views you get in, on average a certain amount, but I didn't just I just don't know why I didn't equate and do the math to actually realizing that monthly views is a, you can make a lot. Yeah, I got right? accustomed to it pretty quick with the uh, that YouTube course. Of course, yeah, and definitely. They yeah, there's yeah. money, man. That's there what is. I mean. And then like I saw these the ones I know of. Because of uh, obviously having a daughter, you've probably seen them. Like, you know, Blippy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's worth 30 million. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. There's that other, that kid that. You've got the uh, Ryan's, Ryan's worth world. 30 Bro, million. Bro, the guy's right? gone clear. 30 million. And he started when he was three years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just goes to show, like, anyone can. Yeah, of course. Uh, anything is possible. And um, to be for saying that, closer to home, my uh, so one of my uh, family friends, um, they own a motivational channel motivation video channel so it's mm. repurposed they don't even make content oh, okay. they just take like Gary V's speech and, and just repurpose yeah? it yeah, yeah 
gone clear the same thing like they've got yeah. built a whole they got a massive warehouse studio thing they've got a bunch of employees they have cashed out like two free houses two free teslas yeah sick you know what I mean? And just it's repurpose, possible, right? repurpose, yeah, bro. Repurpose You're not even having to make content. Mental. Yeah, they're just taking other people's words. And I think they've gotten to a point now where they, obviously because they are passionate about it, they're trying to, they, they film their own interviews, mm. like their own motivational, if you will. Um, you know, and they've done stuff like they did one with uh, Bugsy Malone. Nice. I think they did one with uh, Mr. Uh, the Mountain from Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know his actual name. Yeah, yeah. Um, but people like that, you know, they've done these. Yeah, things. it's possible, man. It's possible. There's a, the Sidemen are a great example as well. Seven of them. Killers. Killing it. They're, now, they're playing at Charlton today, playing the Sideman football match. You've got Mr. Beast coming over. and all. they got that, all sorts There's of people so there. many yeah. people there. I, that speed guy there, there's loads of people. But when you look at what they did, they started basically playing like FIFA, like JJ KSI, playing FIFA and just sharing it. Does anyone remember his, his first videos? Oh. I remember watching him. Yeah, I used to watch him. And he was like, yeah, FIFA. And then just like these comedy wacky just character the skits and the mad yeah. stuff and like the thing is you know look at them now they've got one the side men which that brand alone is worth multi-millions but they've got their own individual brands they've got react channels which they even say themselves we're basically scamming a living we're reacting to someone's video and we get millions of views a day they've got their own food brand they've got their own vodka clothing and like i say people are building empires now off of things like this and i think for anyone it's like there's there's so much opportunity out there now mm. you just have to remember Picking up a camera and filming yourself on the first video and watching the views there and then is probably not going to deliver what you think. Those people get millions again. It takes work. It takes you know, like, work. It's the same as trading, yeah, right? Yeah. Trading is the unique um, aspect of it. I always say that like, trading is one of the hardest things you'll do. But if you really want to, you know, prove to yourself what you're capable of, trading is the one to choose because as we talked about, self-mastery. Yeah. You're going to have to face all the issues with yourself, all your laziness, all your bullshit. It goes out the window if you want to be successful at that. But in terms of uh, everything else, so YouTube and social media being one, the intricacies are still there. Yeah. You know, people just think of, oh, it's a video. Oh, you had to edit it and then upload it. But the Bro. people understand, <laughs> thumbnail is a massive thing. Yeah, yeah. How the thumbnail is put together, the title and the words used in the title, uh, the descriptions, the the keywords, the... Uh, in the, even inside the video, what, the hook's you know, got to be. Like you got 30, nowadays TikTok's killing everyone. I think it's 10, 15 seconds. If you now. got, if you ain't 15 seconds in, if you ain't hooked someone, they're off, bro. And that's damaging the video then, because then people are like, the watch time goes down, the click through rate goes down. So then YouTube's like, oh, it must be shit. We won't put it out. Mm -hmm. So like I always say to people, please, if you're gonna watch a video, just please watch at least a minute, because you're just killing the video off, and it's like you might as well not click on it. Mm, yeah. And these are things that people don't realize. But like you say, I mean, I shared a video recently. Didn't didn't get the views I thought it would, but I wanted to share how much I made on a year on YouTube, mm. because everyone seems to associate again youtubers millionaires yeah and i'm like look there's a there's a big difference like getting to that point where you're making multi-millions is, is a long game i spent a year on youtube posting every week and i made 4.5k i got 795,000 views i made 4.5k that's not enough to live off that didn't i spent 5k on equipment so i'm down <laughs> I, like, i'm down and that's why i say people like that's one year i now need to go year two Year mm. three, year four, and over the time, maybe year five, I might go. Oh, I made fifty k or something. Maybe Same with these, like, you know KSI I mean? and these, like, they didn't just go. No, of course they didn't. You know they were, I mean? they were. It took time, and then when it goes, everyone I've spoken to that's gone is like, bro, when it goes, it's gone. Like you'll just go, and you'll be like, oh my god, you know. And people are making. I know people that are doing fifty, sixty k a month just from YouTube posting once a week, and they're like, it took me five years to get here. And again, it's like trading. I know people that are making that in it's everything. There's in no minutes. overset uh, overnight success. No. You know, there's no overnight success. And uh, the thing is, the ones that you see overnight in terms of like very quick virability. Right? Yeah. So let's take, you know, that, that bad baby girl. You remember that one uh, Catch Me Outside girl? Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's her. And then there was like, when she came about. Yeah. There were like a bunch of others. Yeah. Um, there was a, when she came about, there was a bunch of others who came along and uh, try to replicate, you know, this, yeah, like, yeah. you know, sort of how to describe it, like brat, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, young kid, you know, being very loud and thingy. So she pivoted and obviously did some bunch of shit, and she now she's apparently killing it on OnlyFans. Apparently, oh, really? made, like, yeah, apparently she got invited to speak at Oxford University. What, <laughs> bro, <it's> ludicrous. <laughs> they don't even get into that. But she's pivoted. She had to do like she had to do things to stay successful. Yeah, these other ones who did pop off originally, yeah, overnight success, if you will, crashed, crashed, yeah. disappeared, gone. Right, because that's how it works. Yeah, cool. Unless you work and put in some uh, and and learn to pivot and actually, you know, uh, you put in some sort of effort 
I, I, you may get some form of success, but it will disappear. Yeah. Right. It's the same with anything. Like even in the gym, you might, yeah, you might have motivation, go do something, and you get a little result. If you stop putting in the consistency, stop turning up, stop trying to excel. Because even in the gym, your body gets used to the workout. Of it does, yeah. So you have to adjust. You have to pivot, right, to continue to get results and to continue to grow. Same with YouTube. Same. So like with YouTube, you like you may pop off, and you'll study that video that pops off. And realize, oh, okay, let me try and replicate that. And it might work again. Yeah. It might work again. But if that's it gonna, won't always work. Yeah, the climate yeah. will change. Yeah. And you have to pivot. And that's what these guys all do. Like, uh, you know, in terms, like Mr. Beast, he's a killer at it. Yeah. Think about it. Like, uh, when his top video was uh, the, oh, I can't remember the name of it now. Squid Games. Squid Games, yeah. So he had to pivot quickly, put something together rapidly whilst the hype was still alive. Yeah, yeah. If he had taken too long, it might not have popped off. Right, he's obviously still a big YouTuber. Yeah, before, of course he is, yeah. But that's the, one of the keys to his success is keeping in grain yeah. with what's going on at the moment. Same with like the uh, Sidemen's podcast, for example. I'm sure they'll talk about topics mm. that are relevant now. Yeah, Just yeah. as like today, for example, we talked about the MT4, MT5 stuff that's yeah. going on today. Now, this won't come out for a few weeks, Yeah, yeah. right? But in essence, that's what's necessary to yeah. be able to pivot and move and, and plan and react quickly. You know, like some of these pages you see, um, drama alert or something or some shit, like, you know, oh, yeah, I think some of these pages that, online yeah. that their their whole platform and, and their job essentially is reacting and, and reporting the social media drama. Yeah, yeah. So think about their job. They have to be on the ball, mm -hmm. you know? They have to be on the ball and be ready to be like, oh my God, okay, uh, Logan Paul just did this. Bam, 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 yeah, yeah, done. Yeah. Shot the content, the, the the TikTok's done, the YouTube video's done, bang, it's out there. Yeah. But if they're not on the ball, if they're not efficient, no matter how successful they are, they're not going to keep that success. No. Right? Um, another example is a, a comedy sketch guy. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name, but he does it constantly. Munchiwawa. That's the or one, yeah. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but yeah. Him. <laughs> but Savage. I didn't even yeah. want to try. I don't even remember his name. Yeah, if I did, I would I've just bump, mumbled it up bad. I know. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. <laughs> but him, prime example. Yeah, he, he reacts he, quick. He, you know, a lot of these comedy sketch people, they they pop off and they fall off because yeah. they they keep doing the same comedy. Yeah. This guy, he popped off a long time ago and he's still around because he does it he rapid. Reacts, yeah. Right? Rapid, COVID, bang. Uh, Boris Johnson's done this, bang. Boom, yeah. You know, right, probably recently, the Queen's probably passed away, bang, he probably did something, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Rapid, like, and you have to have, like, I don't know how he does it that fast, he's though, because he literally man, does it, creative. like, something probably came out in the morning. By that night, he's got something out. Yeah, he has a green screen in his room, doesn't he? And he just, he's got, I think he's got an editor and he's just like, yo, we're doing a video. And he's just bosh, you know? And sometimes that's where people's best ideas come from. Sometimes like I'll say, I'll be I'll be journaling my thoughts for something and I'll get a video idea for a stupid skit. Like the other day, I've got a Hoover and I'm pretending to be a SWAT officer. Like just <laughs> I mad. Love, I love it, it just comes to me when I'm writing down and I'm like, right, we're going with that, you know, or I'm fighting myself with a bat. And that's just where it just pops up. And I'm like, well, I'd laugh at that. So I'm gonna make it. And, you know, some people are like, bro, what the hell is this shit? And other people are like, bro, that is the best thing. And, and you're always going to get that that kind of mix of some people you like it. can't make everyone won't. happy. You're never going to please everyone. But you've got to stay true to yourself. And the biggest takeaway I took from YouTube when I did that course and stuff was like, make sure the content you make, you enjoy. If you don't enjoy it and you're doing it for the sake, you won't sustain the growth because you'll go on board. I need to do something else. And I met a few people on there. There was a girl who did like NFTs when they were popping off. And she got to like 100K in like a month. Something like mental. And she was like, oh my God, I'm a YouTuber. It blew up. But then she was like, I don't like NFTs. I don't want to make anything about them. And I was like, that's a problem. Like you've got 100,000 people following you for NFTs. And she tried to pivot into like tech and she got like no views. And I was like, you might as well just start a new channel because that's dead. And that's the thing. And I think I came to that point. Like I say, I got quite a lot of traders and I still deliver, the thing is I deliver the value for traders still, but it's only the ones that are willing to level up this, not mm -hmm. so much the technical side. So I'm always careful of like, I'm gonna do a video, I wanna compare the new iPhone with my camera to see what's better. I like tech stuff, so I wanna do it, but I know already the views on that are probably not gonna do what a normal video would do. And I'm like, well, that's cool, because I wanna make this video. But I also wanna do it because slowly I'm getting more sponsors that are reaching out. And what I've realized is in the trade, specific trading, not many people want to sponsor a trader because they have that stigma of you're a trader. Don't know, yeah, you yeah. Know? But when you start showing like a different side, they're like, oh, bro, I, I, like for instance, I've got a new standing desk coming from FlexiSport. They just reached out. They're like, look, we've got a new desk out. Would you be interested in just throwing a 60 second piece in your video? I was like, fucking yeah. Like, I like that sort of shit. That, that was because of a video I did of a vlog. And I was, 
I was like, okay, and I'm seeing more. But then on the trade side, I'm getting brokers every week. Hey, we'll give you 10K if you talk about our broker. And I'm like, yeah. I can see why people sell themselves out because if you're just sitting at home, let's say you're not someone that's putting the work in and you're like, I need money. Someone knocks on the door, you want 10K? You're gonna be like, hmm, I've only got to do a 60 second video mm. or I've only got to get a person to click a link. You know, I had an online casino recently reach out. They're like- They're savages apparently bro, nowadays. They were like, you can, uh, their pivotal point is that you can use Bitcoin, ETH, XRP, all that stuff. They were like, we'll give you, um, our budget is between, I think it was five and 18 grand. They were like, you tell us what you want. And I was just like, well, I don't want to do it because it's gambling. <laughs> Someone said that to like, me. Like, why would I say five? Well, yeah, I'm not going to say five. I'm going to say 18 straight away. <laughs> so... But I thought about it. And I remember saying to the missus, I was like, do you think that's something I can do? And she was like, well, let's work it out. And we worked it all out. And I was like, no, because one, I don't, I don't gamble myself. I'm not into that. Mm. Two, I'm telling everyone to be wise with their money and, and use it right. The last thing I want to post is get get funded, get some money, just gamble. Like it would just wouldn't work. It and never would. And I messaged to the brand and said, do you actually watch my content to see what I'm about? And they're like, oh, well, we had someone scout you out. We like how authentic you are and all that. And I'm like, so you would know that I don't gamble and I don't promote gambling, so no. And they kept trying it. And I was like, no. I recently had a prop firm reach out, not as big as some of the ones we use. And they want to give me an account and they want to pay me. And they're like, can you talk about the prop firm? For me, I'm like, well, I only use one at the moment. Yeah. And I don't want to, I've always said, until you've got that max with them, you shouldn't really need to go anywhere else. So the last thing I want to do is be like, so guys, basically, yeah, this video is sponsored by blah, blah, blah. And uh, you should go to them. What, because they gave me some money? Like, yeah. No, like I have a value. And I think that's what I'm trying to deliver. And, and again, like you say, the authenticity comes across in the long run. Mm. But at the beginning, you can clean up. I know people doing 40, 50K a month through sponsors on small channels. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they have no value. They're like, yeah, fuck it. I'm watching a video the other day and the guy's like, so we've got the latest condoms out. And I'm like, wait, what? Like this guy talks about tech. Yeah. He's talking about content because he's like, I got paid a bag for it. 100%, like podcasts are ruthless for it, you know? Yeah. Like, Logan Paul's podcast. Yeah, they talk about some mad shit. Yeah, bro. yeah, they get all sorts and they like their, you know, uh, weed products, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because obviously it's legalized in a lot of America, but you know, at the end of the day, it's about responsibility. It's the same with me. Like I wouldn't, sponsors wise, in terms of training, I have thought about it. I've turned it down the majority because at the end of the day, the ones that are trying to reach out to you, they don't have any, you know, I've never looked at them. I don't even know who they are a lot yeah. of the time. Um, and, you know, been offered all sorts of crazy money. Now, don't get me wrong. If I felt like, oh, yeah, I have an audience, it can be helpful. Like, let's say, like, I see markets. When people message yeah, me yeah. saying, uh, if they met, the, loads of people message me, like, what broker do you use? I would say, like, I see markets um, or watch uh, prop firms. I say FTMO. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. And now, if I wanted to, and if I felt the need to, then I would. I wouldn't mind uh, doing like an IC market affiliate or an FTMO, uh, FTMO affiliate, right? I wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, but it's just not a focus of mine, you know? No, no. But if I had a big audience, it would be a no brainer. I would be stupid not to. Yeah, cool. Because why would I throw away 20, 30K? And I could use that money for anything. I could use that money to set up an event. I could exactly, use that money yeah. to, to put it into my child's college fund. You know what I mean? Like I can do whatever the hell I want with that money. And they're gonna give it to someone, and they're gonna probably they're probably getting making money off my name anyway. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah, you know what I mean, so like, I get it though. Like, you know, for the people who they're just taking it off anyone. Like I said, if it's a if you know it's a good company, like IC Markets, FTMO, like these ones that everyone pretty much knows about yeah. anyway. But if they're gonna offer you something, then I'm yeah, like, I'm there, I'm game yeah. all day long. But like, it's not it's not like a break, you know. But like when it comes to tech, for example, if you do videos or like the st sit stand desk it's a great one you know like marshy marshy's a great one because i was like marshy bro like your setup is like the og setup yeah, yeah. ever like when people yeah. visualize a setup yours is the one so let's say if someone sponsored him and said oh, add this to your setup or this it makes complete sense you know does. what i mean yeah, of course it does yeah you know, and he could easily do it you know yeah, what i mean yeah. but like um you know like you said about tech there like you do a few videos like that surely someone from like sony who does like 20k cameras might be like, hey, yeah, take, do you this, want to take this camera. Yeah, out? take this camera for free. Sweet. And you're going to be like, no. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> no. I don't want it because I, I, you know, and that's what I say to people. Like, anything I make from YouTube, I reinvest into YouTube. So as soon as I started making money, hmm. I was like, right, I need to get a camera because I'm using my phone. I need hmm. to get a microphone. I need to get a light. I need to invest in a course, like, to try and give the better production. And I'll always do that. Anything I do, like, because on the videos now, you, I don't know if you've seen it. You can turn on like a thanks. And people can tip you for the video. No one, I think I made a pound 89 from a tip. I've only, I had it on like a few weeks. But you can basically turn it on and people can go like, thanks for this and whatnot. And I put like this, anything you do give, whether it's a coffee or whatever, it's to, I will try and reinvest it in the channel. Mm. Now, obviously some big channels are probably, 
cleaning up on that. Mm. So others, people. Well, a lot of people have Patreon, don't they? Yeah, Patreon was another thing that, again, some um, when I was in the commu- the course I was doing, they were like, why don't you set up a Patreon? Mm. And then from the Patreon, you can set up multiple things to benefit people. And I was like, yeah, but the problem is with that is my audience is mainly traders. I set up a Patreon, they're going to think it's that, that trading course. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. That's why I've just left. Yeah. So it's like, it's, I, I did look at, can I set one up that I don't have to manage? But then I'm like, well, that's not really worth it. And then I was looking at what else can you do and at the moment. I can't think. But I know people that have got Patreons that are doing like uh, how to start a YouTube or how to edit or a book club or whatever it is. Mm. And they're making okay money that they're then using to reinvest. But it seems there's a stigma. When I put that thanks on, someone messaged me, oh, look, just want money. I was like, bro, like you forget that. Yes, you could say that we're doing this for some form of money, but I'm using it to better my equipment. The camera I want is four grand without a lens. I don't want to put four grand out of my own account into that. I want YouTube to pay for it. I then want to get a better light and eventually I want to get a studio where I could perhaps host like podcasts and stuff. So it's only going towards that, but people just think, oh, I want money. And I'm like... Well, the fact is like, <laughs> of course you want money. Like, why else, why else do you do, do this you know what stuff? I mean? yeah. Like, you can have passion for something. Like, even me, like, podcast-wise, uh, my YouTube channel, everything's not monetized. Like, I, I can monetize, but I just don't because yeah. I know... At right now, monetization wise, I'll probably make you know, 50 pounds or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's 50 pounds I could have, but I'm not too bothered. Um, and I'm trying to help the audience grow. Now, when I, you know, if we get to a point where we're making hundreds of thousands of views or whatever, of course I'm going to have the monetization on. You know, yeah, I'm not, of course. Again, like YouTube's making the money off my name anyway. Exactly. So, why don't I, I want a piece of that? And the funny thing is, anytime it's someone who's saying, oh, you're just doing it for the money, it's always people who aren't doing fuck all. Oh, no, you know what yeah. I mean? They never made a post in their life. They never tried to add value to anyone else in their life. They don't even have any value to fucking give. Like, I don't care. <laughs> no, you know? it's Honestly, it's like true. I've gotten to this point where I'm just savage. with. Everything. I've cut off so many fucking people. Not because, and again, it's not to say that these are bad people necessarily, but I just noticed that they were not cutting their fucking weight. And it's that benefit you know I mean? life, mate. That's exactly. And I just, you before, and you only get one life, right? You yeah. only get one life. So, you know, being savage isn't like you're trying to, you know, you're better than other people. No, 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 no. but it's just understanding that you have to prioritize you, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, people saying shit, fuck them. Like, again, I'd, I've never had anyone who's actually doing better than me. And this is a classic saying, right? No one who's actually doing better or doing the same, even even the same. Hey, hey and even people who are maybe lower in essence, in, in let's say their community smaller. Even then, I've never had hate from people like that. It's only ever been people who try and do these little questions or hate who are ghosts. It's always ghost accounts or just yeah. random people who aren't doing fuck all. Like they're not showing nothing. And that normally means they ain't doing fuck all either. Cause again, yeah, if yeah. they have the time to give their opinion, they do it. Yeah. yeah. They got too much time on their hands. Yeah. It's like when I see, <laughs> I always, when I see people who protest, right? I understand that protest, you know, if there's an actual uh, thing to protest, then of course, but I, I never understand like where people get time from. Like, especially the ones who like doing the one, you know, like the extinction rebellion, they're gluing their hands to the yeah, to the like, floor and madness, shit. Bro. Where do they get the time to do this over and over again? And like, I remember there was a time when uh, there was a protest for a whole week on Oxford Street where they literally yeah. parked a boat there. They were there for a whole week. Mad. Where do they get the time? Like, I don't understand. Like, they must be billionaires, right? They have to be. How do you get the time? Yeah. Like when I see you know people when they are uh, on the street in Central, you see them all the time um, promoting Christianity or promoting like yeah. these different religions, right? Who, where do you get the time? Because the only thing that makes sense is that they make money from the donations that go to the church, which meant to go to help people or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Instead, it's paying salaries, right? That's the only thing that makes sense. Otherwise, I can understand that you're passionate about something, but where do you, you better be rich? Yeah, your family yeah. better be fed, yeah. right? You're, you, you know, there better be not be any debt in your household because if that is the case, what, are you what doing the fuck are you doing? Honestly, no, I couldn't agree more. And if it, literally, I say it to my wife, we'd walk in, I'd be like, where the fuck does this guy get time? <laughs> He's there every fucking week. How does he do that, yeah. right? Because I want to be able to do that shit. I want to yeah, be able yeah, to be so sure. carefree and be so successful that I can stand on the corner and say whatever the fuck I want. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But, um, it, it's just crazy to me honestly yeah, but it's exactly. a it's a funny world that we live in uh, in terms of like doing the things that we do and, and navigating the, the the landscape that we we are currently in plus especially with the world with the way the world's going at the moment um it's crazy times man it was a bad time to book a, a trip to new york bro yeah bro i tell you because yeah. because uh yeah by the time i get there probably the dollar will be more uh valued higher than the pound bro, i can't it's believe true. that i'm so glad i got ftmo back on i got dollars instead of pounds again same <laughs> I was i'd be fuming that. otherwise i used to have the pound account and i'd have been like wait what i'm getting less than nah <laughs> it's always Honestly. been more 
So um, yeah, I've gone back to dollars, which I'm glad about. But I can't believe it. Like just watching GU this week, I was just like, well, you could have just hit sell and you'd have been chilling. Like I see people trying to call the bottom all the time, and I'm like, mm. just. Uh, I remember Riz put on uh, the other Riz. He put yeah. on his uh, on his Twitter. He said, "Oh yeah, all you'd have to do with GU or just like these pairs, the, the current conditions, just sell. Don't stop loss. You'll be fine." Be chilling, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. As a joke, obviously. And I put, "Oh, I I just opened a." A short on you know how it's GU. Yeah, yeah. I said I put a short on USD GBP. <laughs> <laughs> Was it's not working, man. It's What's not going? working, bro. <laughs> Abort mission. I thought, I didn't realize you could do that. You know, for a long time I didn't realize you could do it the other way. Mm. Um, and it actually does show up. Obviously, you can't trade it. I don't think you can trade it that way. Um, no, I don't think there's, so. There isn't really a reason to. It's just, <laughs> no. really, it's just the same chart inverted. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Um, but yeah, man, it's wild times. But it's interesting times because especially for people like us who get to actually you know day to day we are in the financial markets mm -hmm. you know we're constantly up to date with the financial markets this is another reason why trading trading is recession proof yeah. right because essentially that's what trading is it's the foreign exchange market yep. right so it's always moving yes it's more volatile yeah which can mean greater opportunity you have to take the other side which is be more risk yeah, you know yeah. be, be careful of the risk but greater opportunity as you say sell like literally any sell position you could have the mindset of if i just hold a partial right there was a trade on Wednesday, I think it was this week on GU, uh, EU, sorry, um, that if just held a part, it went to a, one to 100, uh, I think one to 150. Yeah, yeah. It's not about RR. No, no, no. But if no, you no. hold a partial, yeah, right, uh, as per rules, knowing that the volatility is much higher and knowing which direction the trend's been, yeah. that one, that one, that 20% of, or even let's say 10% partial, 15%, or if it's half it's percent risk, up. seven and a half percent, right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to add up. There's another trade on Friday, so yesterday. Uh, again, morning, Frankfurt, Great short. Uh, I think that went to one to 40 or 50. Yeah. Yeah, before New Mad York. Mad before, yeah. So, and the conditions. Just the times are in. Yeah, that's it, bro. People can't understand how to look at them. I get a lot of people messaging me like, I was, there's nothing left. Hmm. Like to the, I'm like, we don't always have to look left. Like, look at what's going on. If you're constantly trying to buy. That's the thing. That's when buy. I don't like trading, you know. When well, there's nothing to the left, that's when I just I take just a step chill. back. Yeah. Well, we're in unknown territory. We don't know what's going to happen now. Mm. Do we? Like, we could hit. I mean, the pound's not far off. Like, isn't it like lower than it's been since 1980 or something? Or yeah, 70? 85, I think it's literally like there now, yeah. So we don't know where that's going. If it goes to parity... It is. It definitely is. You can see it. Yeah, like, it's not it's even moving. far. Nah, the way it's moving. Like I yesterday. think it's a 500 pips or something? Something like that. It no, was think... 1,200 last time I looked, and now it's like... I think it's 700 or 800 pips. 700 800 pips. Like, yeah. So yeah, give it a month. Not even a month. Give it a week. Could be there. That's why they took MT4 off us. <laughs> yeah. They're like, some people are about to get a bag if they catch the long. Some people will hold that long for life. Mm. Imagine you catch the bottom of, all, but that's what people are trying to do now, don't they? They catch the bottom of all-time lows. They can't, oh. yeah, they always do it, you know. Like, you know what it is? Uh, I've realised a lot of people they'll miss the original move, so the original move was to short. So because of that, their mindset is, I want to short, but, but I'll I'm do gonna long it. Yeah, I'm going to buy to, I buy to sell, and it never, right? it never gives a sell. It just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, and the, the, by the time the buy does come, they've taken all the L's. Yeah, you've blown the account. Don't even mean anything anymore. Yeah. Like you've lost your account and your life's over, and you're on OnlyFans. <laughs> Hey, only fans from what I'm seeing is bro lucrative. people are bro. cleaning up man yeah. <laughs> if I didn't have kids in that I'm, I'm on it bro bro that is a madness honestly it is but bro we've we done a long one today did we um, yeah I think it's been like hour and 50 or something Oof. Uh, but it was a pleasure as always yeah as always bro you know, I think there's a lot to learn as always I always learn as well uh, which I appreciate but thank you for coming on my channel this time no worries bro. Um, maybe next time I'll be back on yours yeah we'll, yeah yeah we'll keep sure. doing back keep and forth back and forth <laughs> but um, hey we got a meal now we'll go into central but thank you as always catch you on the next one <laughs>